All right, sorry, I'm getting everything started. Slash marker uh, VOD view start around here because music. Okay. <clears throat> so for people who don't know, Ice is a player who is who got third at set ten worlds. He's known as an APM demon. They also banned everything must go. So you're not allowed to pick it. This is officially banned. And they said that it has made the lobbies much healthier and there was a decent amount of diversity. So, oh God, the quality just dropped. Can I force 1080p? I can. I can. <clears throat> Look at that. 1080p VODs from China. What? I just forced an EP, man. Okay. Can you announce this? Because I am actively working. Sure. Sure. Okay. So we slam even shroud. We got dropped a bow, belt, cloak, and spatula. And it's a spatula. It's a spatula uh, portal. Wait a second. Someone took everything must go. It was banned. Wait, <laughs> wait. Uh, I was told that it was banned in tournament. That's why, that's why they're pinging it. Wait a second. Uh, th this dude just messed up. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's not supposed to happen. Uh, I don't know what the procedure is in China. Maybe that guy automatically goes eighth, but yeah. Does he have to FF? Uh, the thing is, I don't even think you're allowed to FF until stage three and that kind of messes everything up, but man, it feels bad for that guy. Okay. Well, anyways, we're starting off with, we start off with even shroud slam, which is really interesting. A lot of people think that last whisper is really important. So he's cl clearly going to angle for like Kaisa cause he has AD and he took lucky ricochet, but he slammed even shroud. And a lot of times people rather greed for last whisper. So I want to see. I want to see how this works out for him. Obviously, it works out pretty well in the sense that uh, he scored the highest points today. But I know a lot of people who wouldn't slam even shot because they think it's a lot weaker than Last Whisper. At the same time, he is playing a spatula-based portal, so he could theoretically play something else. That's I don't know. I don't know what you do with your spatula usually. In Kaisa, it, the best case uh, use of it a lot of times is Story Weaver, because you just get like a plus one Story Weaver. I mean, you can, if you get another spatula, you can get a Titan's crown. But yeah, a lot of times people don't have much they can do with the spatula. <clears throat> I don't feel bad if it's banned. The players should know. Well, yeah. I mean, I feel bad because sometimes, like, okay. So I, I I sympathize because I feel like a lot of times players who are doing that, they're not trying to be malicious about it. They're like usually so focused that they're just not thinking about that because. It's like a lot of times they make those kinds of mistakes due to turning nerves. And and I empathize with that. Because like you're you're trying so hard to like focus and like you but you're, you're just not like you're just not present of mind and as a result cuz like a silly mistake that could have been avoided is now causing you to go eighth. It's just really unfortunate is all. Yeah. The bell cloak opener you kind of have to. Yeah, I can see that. Especially because you, everyone has spatula openers, so you kind of have to decide how you want to pick your early game tempo. If you keep like four, because if you have belt, bow, and cloak open, you can slam runins or nashers. If you slam nashers, you have open cloak for AP, but his his opener is for like AD. And so I go for red buff instead. Okay. So he, he has win loss loss. But he's not trying to lose streak. Even though he went win, loss, loss, he's still trying to level and fight for streak. I think that's interesting. Going up against what looks like to be a Yone player, Gargantuan Resolve, with a Heavenly Emblem. It makes sense. There's going to be multiple Heavenly Emblems slammed. Even if they're not trying to play Yone, I think Heavenly Emblem is just generically really good to think about because you can play Vertical Heavenly. Heavenly Kane has become more popular in China in the past couple of days. Like in the last tournament we've watched, <clears throat> China players end up just playing Yone 2, getting to 9, selling Yone for Kane, playing Kane Morgana, and then 
like trio carry like Kane, Wukong, um, Kane, Wukong, and Irelia at level nine with Heavenly. Six rating items and counted a two six, but he wants to lose. He kind of wants to lose this one, so he wouldn't. So he's not slamming anything. But what he could do is he could wait to see what other people are doing. Wow, three people are not slamming their items. Well, actually, one person's not. Okay, it looks like it looks like the everything must go player is effectively forfeiting because he's just not doing anything. He's not buying any units. He's not. Um, he's not equipping his items. He's not even moving anything. Looks like that person just basically like left the game. Man, that is so tragic. Two ghostly emblems. One person's gonna go for eight ghostly. Is Reaper fake on Kane? Uh, no, no. You you actually. At least, I mean, two Reaper is still really good. It's just that um, you have to play lower quality units if you're, and you also don't have four Reaper if you sell the Yone. Like you don't want to play Kindred two late game either because Kindred just is really weak. A lot of times you're just like making do with it because you really want to have a. Um, you really want to have four Reaper, which is a really powerful effect. But like, it's not like Kindred's particularly super amazing. It's that four Reaper's amazing. <clears throat> so if you sell Yone, you just sell Kindred and you just play like legendaries, like you know, seven Heavenly plus Irelia two, Kane two, Wukong two. You have like a Rakan maybe as well if you have an emblem. Yeah. I went seventh with seven Story Reaper, four Tricksters, Silver. Kaisa worth lucky brick. Okay, I'm not not sure I follow who baby what you're saying. So you talk out your stepping reaper for a better legendary. Yeah, essentially like late game, those reapers aren't worth that much. And if you have Kane 2, he's your single target burst. And then like Wukong, Irelia, Rakan, um Udir. Like you just play that enough, and you you should have enough damage to try to clean up stuff. As long, it's kind of like a t a, a team effort, just enough threats. Another way you can think about it is like you're playing Yone to f to essentially fast nine and play Heavenly as your support traits instead of Dragon Lord. A lot of times, right now, what you can do in the late game is just play Dragon Lord plus two star legendaries, right? Dragon Lord plus Azir, Irelia, uh, Udir, and like uh and, and and then kaisa so it's the same concept you can do heavenly as your support traits into like whatever uh fast nine strategy three two augment is prismatic hedge fund wow what else did he have as his option i mean the others weren't that great bruiser crown is not amazing here he's gonna just take hedge fund into a fast day. I mean, Ice is a player that I've seen take hedge fund the most out of almost any CN player. This dude loves money. What region is this? This is China. This is China. They have an official TOC event today. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and transition. But you can see in the top left that... Um, You can see in the top left that it's it's the round of 64, and then after four games, they cut the 48 players. They cut the 48 players. Okay, does that help? That, that should be better. <clears throat> Put this, uh, this POV here. Good morning, Payat. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Okay, so one guy FF'd. If you're wondering why it's a seven-player lobby, one person accidentally took everything must go, so he has to forfeit. Caitlyn gives you four free rerolls. Wow. 100 gold rerolling. Hang on, man. This guy hit fortune. Fortune roll six. Six. So he has to lose between one, two, three rounds here, and then one, two, three rounds in, in stage four. So the time he cashes out is four, five, right after the carousel. Dude, he's, he's still not even leveling a six. That's how greedy he is. He's doing a slow six. He has full 100 gold greed on hedge fund at 3-3, three, three, level five. Why FF? Because that, the augment is banned in tournament. 
Why is it banned? Well, let me ask you a, a more important question. Why is it getting disabled next patch? Why is it getting disabled next patch? Because the augment is not healthy for the game. It is... Uh, it is very OP. Even though its top four rate isn't that high, it's just a very warping... Uh, a very warping augment. My guess is because the Zion traction. No, no, it's just it's it's just a, it's just an unhealthy augment. Like at high levels, that augment is, if you play it in an optimized way, it is very uh, it is just very warping to the lobby and it's just too good. What does warping mean? <laughs> uh, it affects the game too much. Like it, it, it influences the game's outcome too highly. It like distorts everything because it, it, it highly incentivizes people to play uh, reroll for cost, and it's like too much, too much. Ferdinand, I appreciate your video about Challenger TFT. As someone who hopes to hit Challenger one day, it was helpful. Oh, I'm glad that you thought so. I got some people who were like, "What? Why did you even do the survey? It was pointless." And I was like, "Okay, well, I don't know. I, I thought it was fun." Forty nine. 109 gold, 49 HP. We have to lose four more times. I'm glad you guys liked it. Thank you for, for appreciating it. Thanks for watching it, you guys. I just thought, I thought it was fun content. I thought it's like, uh, you know what it is? It's because people, the reality is, people who didn't learn anything from that are the people who won't learn anything in general because they refuse to be open-minded about things they, if they, they refuse to take the lessons that they could be learning because they're too busy focused on other things like they watch a vod like well this guy just high rolled like anybody can do that they're looking at like you know some some other circumstantial and they're just always making excuses and not actually focusing on what they can control right I actually don't really, I, I don't actually even get affected by comments like that. Now, if a lot of people said that, like, ah, this video sucks, I'd be like, okay, well, I feel bad. But it's only like a couple people. I don't know if I'll do it again. Someone said that I should try doing multiple of them, like, uh, every set. I don't, I don't think so. I'll probably, I might do one again, like, maybe... Maybe in like set 20 or something like that to see if anything has changed. But I think doing it every so often is, uh, kind of defeats a little bit of the purpose. It's going to be a little bit, it's going to be very much the same type of answers. Okay. We're at level seven, 122 gold stage four, one. We still haven't used our spatula, by the way. Still haven't used our spatula. He's hoping that he can get like another spatula to make a titanium ground. But if he doesn't, he's just going to reforge it. This is a spatula portal. Other people have like double ghostly, double dryad. Like, what are we going to do? Dryad Nar, by the way, is starting to climb higher and higher in the tier list. I have to convince Dish Soap that it's actually like, like something that we should put into S tier. Or not S tier, sorry, A tier. Because <clears throat> right now it's in B tier. But, uh, I mean, Dish Soap basically just stopped playing the patch. So, I'm pretty sure I could just do it. He wouldn't mind. Do you guys think Nar is A tier or no? Right now we have him top of B tier. Do you think he's eight tier? Any thoughts? I know a lot of people who uh, who think Nar is like kind of fake. You just had to have the spot for it. But the more I'm seeing, I'm just seeing a lot of Nar these days. I'm seeing a lot of Nar. Healing orbs. A hundred gold. Here you go. The roll deck. Can we find Kaisa two? Four two. A hundred gold. Level eight. Kaisa. Okay. 70. How far is he going to go? He has Galio pair. He's rolling a lot. A lot. Galio 2. Wow. Rolling down to... Roll down to 20. I, I guess this is actually like 40 because he could sell a lot of these things he doesn't want. He doesn't need, for example, his Annie pair. <clears throat> okay. He sold his Irelia as well, so he's back up to 30. Healing orbs, uh, lucky ricochet. Is this enough to stabilize and win out? 
Kind of hard to say. If Zyra and Zoe are an A, then Nar should be twos on the same kind of level situational Rero comp Lux too. All right, say less. I mean, I think I do. I do think those are pretty solid if you're able to get them. So, I'll do. Uh, I'll, I'll change the, the Kindred Dryad one. I'll move it to the bottom of A. Boom. What up, Dazzler? Killing orbs is trash. The stats in it are awful. It's not. It's, it's just not. It's not that. It's not uh, amazing, but it's not bad. It's, not, it's like a generic combat augment. There's nothing really wrong with like healing orbs, healing your front lines. It's all right. It's a lot better when you're playing front to back in general. And Harmasis is much better for like selfish melee carries that just like want to heal themselves. Healing orbs is like your backline heals your frontline, kind of like Gunblade, which is kind of what the, the setup wants. It's all right. Support item. What does he go for here? He won the Randuins. Oh, he won the sword. He won the sword and the Oh no, he won the Kaisa. He won the Kaisa. I see. I see. Why Zoe over Aatrox? Because he's still playing Fortune. He's playing Fortune. He's 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 on his turn. He can cash out now. So he he won two rounds, cashed out, got two components. That's it. We played a six fortune turn for two components. Mm, that doesn't seem particularly worth. I mean, he had to win two rounds. That's part of the reason why. That's that uh, he did. He did get the like the low roll outcome of. Uh, he did get the low roll outcome of fortune. He put it in and got six. It is what it is. 50 HP for two commodes, right? That's like, that's exactly where my head's at. It does not seem particularly worth. Oh, oh, okay. Narrow win. You know what that is? That's a healing orbs diff. Who was talking shit about healing orbs? This constant board peaking is painful to watch. Oh, that's just, yeah, that's just how some players fidget. You know, like, they don't have fidget spinners in TFT, but the equivalent of it is, oh, wow, I went to 9 at Forge 6. Wow, he all in. No gold left. Went to level 9. But it's, it's like an APM, like, uh, keep your brain stimulated thing, or keep your keep your hands warm, keep your brain stimulated. You know when people, like, uh, I don't know, tap on the desk or, like, flip, flip their pencil, things like that. <clears throat> Tattoo of Vitality is not particularly great, but at least it's a little bit of HP on Galio. Dude, Vitality is so bad because Galio is just taunting half the time, so he's not actually even auto-attacking or doing damage. I need a stats class. People always threw our stats, and I'm not sure how to interpret them. Maybe we could we could maybe do a, a how to read stats video. What up, Raptor? How you doing, buddy? Brandon, when you scout a board, what should your order be a party when you're looking for info? It's a really good question and a really hard one to answer. Uh, because the, the, the answer to that is you should be scouting for, to answer a question. So a lot of times, like, for example, do I need to reposition? That's a really common reason to scout. Uh, how about what are the, like, what, um, is there anything that punishes, you know, specific units? So like Zephyr and Shroud, <coughs> scout what people are playing so, uh, so that you're not getting contested. There's a lot of things you can scout for. But in general, the answer to uh, what am I scouting for is up, is really open-ended. In fact, I'm actually going to go as far as to say, if you have no questions worth answering, then why even scout? You're just wasting your own time and not thinking about your own board. 
if you scout just because you think you should and you're just like you're looking at stuff just because you think you should then then you're just wasting your own time like you could be like trying to improve your board think about other things but as you improve in the game what what you scout for becomes somewhat intuitive nar three Wow, mulched and dryad crown and a jeweled lotus. Yo, this Nar ain't dying. Never mind, he died. But he tanked enough. Wow, that's so close. That's such a big fight. That's such a big fight. We, we might not top four because of that anymore. Yone three, uh, Kindred Dryad three. We went. Uh, Umbral. Oh, man, I'm getting more dog the jet. By the way. Really enjoyed your recent challenger video. Would love more stuff like that from you. Hey, Emmy, thank you for the 11 months. Really enjoyed your challenger video. Thank you. I'm glad that you, you guys like this so much. I put a lot of work into it, so it actually feels really good that you guys like it. Um, Can I do a lot of stuff like that all the time? Probably not. Uh, but I, I, I do try to do different types of content for you guys. I'll think about some more cool stuff. The positive reception is very warming. It just inspires me to try to do more things. Put NAR in ATR. I did. Why, why don't you update TFT Academy right now? And tell me what it says. What video are we talking about? I did a video asking 100 players how they hit challenger and I surveyed I surveyed a bunch of people interesting he's going for warmogs fascinating I would have picked uh, another defensive item instead interesting oh I guess maybe he feels like this tattoo of vitality is bad on the Galio so he wants to put warmogs on Galio isn't Steph has hard just like more efficient though because of the damage reduction as opposed to the raw HP? And he's gonna do a tattoo, tattoo of vitality onto Udyr, I think. Maybe Zaya. Dude, this guy is an actual APM demon. He says that he's an AP. Like, do you, do you guys remember what I said at uh, the Set 10 Worlds? That he, uh, that a lot of people, or it's rumored in China that he's the reason why Think Fast is nerfed because he's just like a true APM demon. He, he claims that he can do 10 repositions in one second. <clears throat> I don't know if that's actually true, but. He dead. He's dead. He died to Midnight Siphon. Hey, it's a fourth. You know what? We'll take it. That's a fourth. We lost to Yone 3, Dryads, Duelists. Heavenly Duelists? It's just, it's just regular duelist with Volbear 2. Just for business knowledge, how many people did you hire to run TFT Academy? Uh, it's, 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 it's variable because we have a team of devs. We also have a team of designers that we work with, but it's kind of the folks that we work with through our editing agency. It's not even my editing, it's Kites that he started, so. Uh, it's not that big of a team. Not that big of a team. I, probably, I would say right now the team is like seven people. Something like that. Lux and Janna in the same comp. What are we talking about? There's a person who received who picked everything must go receive additional penalties besides having the forfeit. I don't think so. I don't think so. <sighs> oh, what up, Hita Monaco? Did you watch the JP high level list tournament final? I did not. I didn't know that there's a broadcast. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. I'm, I'm okay with watching that as well. We're just right now watching uh, ISIS POV because he got first in his group for uh, CM. Are you having fun playing? I'm watching right now. I'm not playing. 
but uh if you if you want to know the answer like right now i'm i'm the way i'm having fun is to like just try doing different stuff doing some weird things some of them work a lot of them don't <clears throat> but no i'm pretty sure the patch is played out i'm not I, if i want to play the patch like very serious to climb i think uh not that fun i'm waiting for the new patch why do you think i find tft more fun to watch than play uh maybe you're enamored by the idea of tft maybe you just don't like being the one experiencing the highs and lows and you just like to maybe you're a hate watcher at heart you really like watching people fail because it's like vindicating for like the times that you failed at tft cuck behavior okay i think someone's projecting <clears throat> goth girls with big thighs dude is this nar gonna go all the way oh nar just beat yone it could also be the social part of watching together that's true it could be all those things it could be all those things i mean i think watching tft is just fun in general i do think that like watching tft by yourself is not as interesting i think that's why twitch makes it a lot better of an experience because um you get to watch other people kind of chime in like backseating is like half the fun of tft honestly because you get to like have all the theory and all the suggestions and ideas without having to deal with any of the stress right you get to be like oh man what if it's this and then you know no, but, but but instead what if it's that and then you get to like witness everything in motion without having to have bear any responsibility and stress i find watching lets me experience the highs and lows and when my stream doesn't hit i just go watch setsuko <laughs> there it is it sounds like nar has to go up with i've already put it wait, wait, okay you keep asking the same thing Kriso, you keep saying move Nar up a tier. I already did. You're saying you want to move him up to S. You want to put Nar in S tier. Let's not forge the Kindred Three in the Dryad board. You can't. You can't forge the Kindred Three, but you, you need to keep the Kindred Three. Don't forge it. okay oh kindred kindred <gasps> look at that look at that kindred counters yone <clears throat> jumping back jumping back it's making yone difficult to hit her <laughs> the tom kench portal and no one like there's only one guy trying to stay up in all the puddles by himself uh, that's so funny I've never seen this. Like two guys do it. <laughs> Any chance to lower the music volume? Sure. Thank you, you're welcome. All right, Nar three, Kindred three, Syndra three. Oh, sorry, it's not Syndra three, Dryad Syndra. Oh man. What a duel, Kindred. Oh no! Oh wait, Nor! The rock! Yo, should we move up Nara tier? What do you guys think? Ain't no way Nar Kindred is S tier. I mean, this setup from 
this player is just insanely situational. You're not going to be able to get two dried emblems plus mulched and hit like everything. But Dryad Syndra is pretty cool. Dryad Syndra is very, very cool. Nard dominated our JP tournament as well. So I heard. So I heard. Maybe it's a NAR meta and more people should have just been playing NAR. Mulched into NAR. Oh, Syndra is safe this time. Yona keeps dashing away. I think they I think they won. Yo, that's a 6-0. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Heavenly Lissandra 2, Yone 3, Irelia 2. Yeah, I think the 6 Dryad is about to win this game. I think it also, it's, he's about to like win out. Like 1v1. I don't think he lost a single time against Yone. We're the best units for Dryad Emblem. Any unit that really like fits really well and then complements your existing traits. So I think that's like really good on Kane only because uh, Kane is like a Reaper and a Ghostly, which usually complements your board pretty well. The Reaper for the Kindred. You can put it on, they get, apparently you can put it on Syndra. <clears throat> oh, he lost. You can also put it on like, you know, other good five costs that make a lot of sense that utilize a bunch of AP and HP. Like any, what, what unit doesn't want HP and AD in AP. Good on Alawi. Yep, that is true. Because she loves the HP for the tankiness and she loves the AP for her ability. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, last fight. 3 HP versus 2 HP. Yone is on the Syndra. I think part of it is that the Syndra wants to really get this Neosy big gem off. Oh, okay, that's wraps. Nar. Dude, that's Zhuanzu. This dude made it to set three and set four worlds back to back and then and then became a content creator. Nar Kindred, eh? <clears throat> um Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and skip to the second game. Okay, it's not that loud anymore. Thank God. Wait, what? So he's like Soju. <laughs> kind of. This is him watching other people now, I think. Oh, it looks like their, their tournament got delayed. So he's watching someone else's game. He's watching Chi2 compete. Oh, is this dude going real Darius? No, no, he's five. He's eight out of 20, level five. JG Hodge? D Claw. What is that? Oh, he's playing Salvage Bin. Never mind. Never mind. He's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just... All right, let's go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, it looks like he just started this game. He jumped into 1 3 on the next VOD. I'll look for some other time. <clears throat> okay, I starting off two out of three fortune. Oh, a five item opener. What is he holding? He's holding behemoths AP line. Interesting. Okay. So we have latent force, cybernetic bulk and blistering strikes. Rerolls everything, but blistering strikes. He wants to take that. What about come okay. ends up taking that? 
I was thinking Stimpak makes sense because it seemed like he wanted to play for Fortune. So if you play Stimpak, you're going to lose HP anyways and get a bunch of item components. I guess the value of that is a lot lower now that you start off with five items because you have a lot of the items that you need already. There's still value in doing it. Starting off with five items just means that you get your items sooner. It doesn't mean that you get more items overall, right? Unless I'm mistaken. This is game two. I don't, I, we didn't get to see what portal it was, though. Ari kiss? Ooh. Well, now you definitely are tempted to play Fortune the moment you can. 115 HP for everybody. Nar might be higher than Yoni in the new patch. I feel like it's going to definitely be the case. Like, Nar... Nar got compensated buffed. And Yoni just got straight up nerfed twice. Although, I guess they, they technically uh, buffed Umbral. So, he got nerfed a couple times and then they buffed him. Buffed his trait. So, Yoni did get a little bit better in terms of the Umbral. But he himself got nerfed and Titans got nerfed. Okay, we lost. Yeah, they buffed they buffed vertical umbral, but you need to play Yone in six and nine umbral, so they did technically buff uh, Yone in six. Um, they, they 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 buffed the six umbral, which means you have to play Yone. So I guess you don't have to. You could just play every Yone except or every umbral except Yone with the spats. I have still yet to see people really have success with it. I tried to play with six umbral one time so far. And I think I got like a third or something like that or a fourth. The patch is tomorrow. I mean, yeah, tomorrow night I'll be playing on OCE on the new patch. But uh, the patch comes out on Wednesday. So tomorrow we're going to watch. I think I think I want to watch the dev out uh, the dev hour content with more dog. More dog basically met up with a bunch of other riot devs. And they talk about riot design and then uh, we'll play on some oc we get to try out some new builds <clears throat> what is dev hour oh it's four hours of more dog nerding out about tft with designers about uh, the state of the game tomorrow is like whiz wednesdays yeah yeah yeah, yeah i guess no, no tomorrow i'll be trying out the new patch you guys can give me ideas on how to try things out for the new patch and then i'll play some games for it Maybe a loon won't be trash next patch. Is it a loon or a lune? Like Yone and a lune. Or is it Yon and a loon? Hey, you know, I realized that the fusion of their name is alone. Rage Blade Shojin Janna pumping up. Janna reroll. Alune. Okay. It's Yawn and Alune. <laughs> Yawn? I mean that makes that makes sense because whenever I just see Yawn winning every game, that's what I'm doing. IRL. Watching him close out the game yet again. Titans, Titans, BT, yawn. <laughs> Didn't Bryce say yawn? No, he said, he said yawn. And it was funny because I was making, it was funny because I was poking fun at uh, him calling it yawn. Because when he was calling, when he, when he was saying it, it was happening so often in set six, where in set six, the challenger Yone would summon a copy of himself like a ghost to to go to the other side 
And I called it the Yone clone. That version of Yone was really sick. The Challenger Yone from Set 6, Academy Challenger. Man, he was, he was so hype. Anyways. <clears throat> and then when Yone and Fiora were so strong because they were both four cost challengers. Which is still really cool. I love I love the dual four cost challenger uh, concept. It's actually so hype. Yasuo, Kaisa, uh, Yone, and Fiora. But back when they were so dominant, where you you made Last Whispers, Runins, Yone, and you did like uh, Hodge, GS, uh, Fiora, they would just completely melt front lines, and it was it was so devastating. I called it the, the Yon clone bone. <laughs> Did you just get wrecked? Anyways, two on the fortune. So it's kind of awkward because two, he has to push again, but two is safe enough where even if he gets like five or six, he should be able to uh, at least have a good amount of HP. He's at 113. Taking out all of his strong units, just trying to lose streak. This is, this is the silly thing about fortune is just like, it's correct for you to just, no matter how hell he's on a three streak. He's at 113 HP and he's just like, yeah, now time to just sell everything and then sack for fortune. That's the silly thing about fortune. Yeah, five cost Kaisa that set was also challenger. I'm talking about set nine. The Ionia. Ionia challenger. Remember Yasuo with uh with Kaisa? Set nine. Man, that was a really f set 9.0 was honestly pretty fun despite the legend shenanigans. 9.5 though. We don't talk about 9.5, but 9.0 was actually kind of fun. Really good set, honestly. Okay, so we took Jewel Lotus, we popped this item anvil, and we got maybe just Declaw, just like the only thing for frontline. Assuming he wants to play into Kaisa again. If he wanted to play into Duelist, he could take BT. He could, because he make Tristana too. Oh no, this person's playing double. Oh, two Duelist emblems? Wait, what? Where'd the second one come from? I guess the gold orb. Wow, that's insanity. Huh. Huh. Pushes luck, pushes luck. Six. So you lose these three plus the first three rounds of stage four. So you go to four five. Oh, it's the same exact scenario. Six, he catches that at four five. Except this time he has a two loss runway. <clears throat> Set 9 was fun. I want gear and spin to win back. You sure, man? That was uh, that was one of the most hated compositions, but it was very funny. The, the six Zeeks, gear and spin to win comp. Oh my god. No, that, that comp was so ridiculous. Jesus Christ. You just, if you people don't remember, basically Zeke's used to be a buildable item. It's now called Steric Gauge, but before it, it used to be able to build it with a belt and a sword. And you just, and you had a legend that guaranteed you Pandora's items, your first augment pick. So you would pick it and then you would go Bloodthirster, Titans on Garen, and then you just built six Zeeks. And then he just, it's like, it's like having fine vintage basically on command. You just would build the Zeeks over it. And then you just guarantee get uh, Garen to spin like crazy. Cause um, he scaled off of attack speed. So he would spin more based on how much attack speed you get. So if you got six Zeeks on him, he would spin like nine nine more times and deal more damage. Hilarious, but very broken. <laughs> uh. It's going to be 90 luck if he doesn't win. Thank you, Mint. Thank you, Mint. Is it safe to say that the guy that with two duels almost just won the game? Probably not. Because you still... I don't think you can win the game just on uh, Bull Bear 2, Tristana 2, even though you have eight duelists. Because you, in order to get to eight duels, you have to be level eight, and then if you're level eight, you're not using that level to reroll or not gold, using that gold to reroll. So, 
that kind of dynamic can put you in a spot where if your tempo isn't good enough to manage, you could just start falling off and losing a lot of fights. Having said, it doesn't look like that person's tempo is bad at all. So I, I think that person's in a really good spot. Probably top two. Probably top two. <clears throat> I prefer the Mecha Garen Karen augment. Full power to sword. You guys are mixing up set eight and set nine. I don't know what I don't know if you guys remember from the video survey I did with the challengers, but set eight was like one of the more popular sets. Despite people whinging so much about hero augments. In fact, when hero augments were a thing, Bryce was like very seriously considering quitting TFT. That's how much he, he hated it. He was on the podcast being like, man, I don't know if I'm, I want to do this. TFT sucks. Hero augments are the worst. Dragons are terrible. Legend. And then, and then Legends came. He's like, oh my God, Legends. Everyone hated it, man. 9.5 or 11. So, oh, dude, Sentinel is way more fun than 9.5. Like, I'm not, I'm not having fun right now on this patch, but that's like three days. I can handle three days of, of a bad patch. Where I, st I stopped having fun like two days ago. So it's just like three days. Then 9.5 was just like miserable from start to finish. The launch was terrible. The, the bilge water and then multicaster dominance and then everyone popping, uh, uh, Earth emblems to get like Demacia, vertical Demacia, vertical Noxus, Cho, Cho Bitem was just unstoppable all, all uh, set long. Uh, yeah, the list goes on and on and on. That set was just a nightmare. He's thinking about Radiant Relics. Interesting. Okay, rolled it. Harm Assist 3, so he wants combat augments. Interesting. He's not leveling and rolling. Oh, he's at he's playing fortune still. He's gonna lose two more. 46. You expect to lose about like 15 HP. He's gonna be at like he's gonna be at like 16 to 18 HP or something like that. 16 to, to 18 HP. It's 16 to 20 HP or something around that. Person looks like they are rolling for oh, doing? they're rolling for kiana three didn't mean thank you for the raid buddy on a seven fortune oh god i was playing exalted all to chaos <clears throat> Irelia. Okay, so he's uh, leveling here and rolling. Oh, it's actually the natural interval for him. Man, what up, buddy? I'm getting more dogged again. To be fair, the community was clamoring for Cho Biden to be a thing, and when Dry buffed him, everyone started complaining. Uh, I think they weren't clamoring for it to be a thing. I think they were just having fun playing him, and then he, it was like a meme, and then he became like very good. But yeah, you're not wrong. People did really enjoy that comp before it became meta. Ruz, thank you for the tier one. Also, we're taking a lot of damage. Oh god, we took 14 damage for that one. Yikes, that really hurts. Okay, but if he catches this out, it's gonna be insane. He finds a Kaisa pair. Okay, dude, he took out his Kaisa and just took a million damage. All right, <clears throat> 22. He has more HP than I thought he would, so that's good for him. Seven fortune, eight. Oh, dude, I don't know if that's. <laughs> 
You say it's all good, but there's a seven fortune player in the lobby. Five costs and ZZ rots. Actually, I like this one. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. Exalted. Hi. Hey, Jarshi. Thank you for the two months. Check DMs real quick. Fortune is eek unless you go five seven to two lives SMH. What do you mean? What, what, what does eek mean in this context? Zaya is doing damage. Wait, okay, where? Okay, where? Where have you been? Where have you been? What do you mean Zaya is doing damage? Zaya is, is one of the best five costs to deal damage currently with trick shots. Dude, all these ZZ rots is actually really insane because it just gives us so much frontline and now we have time for the Zayat to cast like three times and then she's going to wipe everything. Even just two times. Man. Zaya too. So cool. Shojin on Zaya is way better than Shojin on Kaisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was telling, uh, I was telling Kurum and Dissope that Radiant Shojin was something that CN plays a lot on Kaisa. Not sorry, on Zaya, and they were very, very skeptical about it. They use like, they use like their upgrades and stuff like that on that. Because if Zaya can cast multiple times, usually you just win the fight. She just wipes everything. She is beastly. Uh, so we're rolling down, trying to see if we can find Kaisa 2. Cannot find Kaisa 2. TG is also fine. TG on Timo. Shojin Kaisa. Shojin Hodge Kaisa. Interesting. Dude, is he bringing this back? He's bringing it back. I mean, he got an insane fortune cash. To help his front line. The ZZ rods are just so hard to deal with right now. Okay, it's not like it's not like the most insane fortune cash, but let me rephrase that. He got a high number fortune cash, so he is he should be winning these fights. Th this this cash out is not like the what it's like it's not unbeatable at all. It's just just that he has so much stuff right now. But he can lose. He definitely can lose. Okay, this is a duelist player. Still, still very healthy. Can you show the damage splits? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not observing. I'm watching Avad. If you have a question, I can I can ask, you, I can answer it. Right now, Kaisa is, Kaisa is not doing that much damage. It's mainly Zaya. Zaya is doing like eighty percent of the damage. Okay, how many of you do this random flicker? Like you see you see the screen flickering, that's because he switches screens and it goes back to his screen. How many of you do this? Just like random jitters for no reason at all. <laughs> My ADHD friend does it. Why do you have to say your ADHD friend? You can just say my friend. <clears throat> No need to call him out like that, man.
Okay, I feel like we haven't played the Seven Fortune player. I feel like it's some good matchmaking so far. GS. The Seven Fortune player straight. Okay, so he, he has some really good matchmaking. He has yet to queue up into the Fortune player. Saying someone has ADHD isn't calling them out. Yeah, but he's also adding unnecessary details that will bias people's reception of it. Like, what if he just said, like, my balding friend also ha does this as well? That's a, that's a, what? Set three? Quay three? Oh, God. Oh, that is, uh, that is not good. Ooh, that is not good at all. I think our chances of winning this lobby has significantly lowered. Okay, but this, this, isn't this perfect matchmaking? He's just dodging the fortune player over and over. Yeah. Significant lower as, as if it's not literally zero. I mean, there's a possibility that guy... I don't know, maybe, maybe a random encounter happens and lets you pick a fourth augment and he picks everything must go. You never know. Normalize having bald friends. I'm pretty sure if you're into gaming, you have bald friends. It's just, I, I don't know why, but just like everyone has like one of those balding friends. And there's a reason why they, the, the term molding caught on because everyone just knows exactly what that is. Like you don't even need an explanation when someone says like, oh, that guy's so mad he's molding. Like everyone knows exactly what that means. <laughs> Wait a second. This guy just scanned the top four. He just, <laughs> he didn't play the fortune player one time. Dude, he's so, okay. That, that was the most high roll thing of all. This, he just didn't queue him a single time into top four. Well, let me guess. He doesn't play him, and then the last two players are just streaking. <laughs> okay. Well, sure. If you get an entire stage and a half not playing the fortune player, sure, you'll hit guys too. Alrighty. Bench press the other. Oh, dude. He should bench. He should he's frontlining Huey and bench pressing the Huey. Tristana three. I like. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, he benches everyone on the board. And then. <laughs> Wait, he died from 22? Hold on. Well, how much HP did he have? How much HP? He took 23 damage at 6-1. How is that even possible? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 units. Plus 9 base damage. That's 23. Negative 1. Oh my god. <laughs> uh... Dude, you, you're not supposed to die at low 20s in stage 6. You're not supposed to... <laughs> you're not supposed to die. <laughs> this is too funny, man. This is too funny. I, I, want, I want him to right-click set and look at his AD. Dude, he's one-punching everybody. He can't even cast. He just becomes one punch man. He can't even cast. His AD is so high. Literally, he just punches and kills everything with one punch. <laughs> because he got shrouded, he can't cast anything. So he just punches once and kills everything. Oh, man. Ooh, I like that. Set Tama. Set Tama.
now he has shojin oh i kind of want man i want him to sell his board i don't know if he's allowed to do that but i want him to sell everything but like the set but i guess you technically can lose if you do that but like he's not going to lose. like he has 64 hp so even if he did lose he would be able to like fight back immediately anyways but maybe it's bad manners to play with your food like in china you never know maybe culturally it's less cool to like to to style on people it might be considered bad mannered like just end the game you already won you know don't drag it out yeah that was epic though just trying to have fun yeah yeah for sure i don't know but me, me, it's kind of like some people don't like showboating like in major league baseball in major league baseball if you do anything to like celebrate you're breaking the unwritten rules of baseball showing emotion after hitting a after hitting a home run in a clutch situation nah calling strikes when they're balls or calling balls when they're strikes thumbs up for me sounds good to me blacklisting all your broadcast rights so people locally can't watch your sports team my wife is a colorado rockies fan guess what can't watch any games because all the tv sold their rights to people that don't watch the colorado people to to, to even watch they, they don't they don't even let their fans watch their games it's asinine but you know what the real problem is players are having fun while playing baseball that's the real issue all right let's go to the next game okay so they're waiting for the round to end <clears throat> That is kind of changing. What has changed? Oh, the, the attitude around it. Yeah, because the game is finally getting younger. I just hope one day baseball will get a commissioner by a person that likes the sport. That'd be a nice change for Man, once. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. That'd be a nice change. Zenchu, thank you for the prime. The real issue is baseball. It's not, man. Baseball is a wonderful game. Also, if you if you guys love nerding out about stats on TFT, like base, there's a whole world of baseball nerdum for you to enjoy as well. If you ever if you ever have trouble getting into meat sports and you're like, meh, I'm not. It's, uh, meat sports aren't for me. But if you love TFT stats, you probably would like uh, like baseball because it's it's not actually too dissimilar than being a, a baseball head coach. You basically set your roster and you kind of you, you there's an expected average performance and you just kind of let them do their thing money ball uh my team m growing up my, my family really liked the yankees but now i become a fan of individual players more than anything my favorite player is uh well it's kind of hard to not like pick shohei otani but before that it was mike trout for a long and it was funny it'd be hilarious if uh they had two of the greatest <laughs> baseball players in the modern era on the same team uh in los angeles at the same time could you guys imagine okay we have a bard and we have a tom kench is this a bard game but you kind of need you kind of need the right you kind of need everything to be go right for it to be a bard game you need to have a good augment for him you need to have good augments Oh, sorry, I meant items. I said the same thing twice. You need you need the right augments. You need the right items. We have belt and vest. Pretty terrible. There is a Caitlyn two in our shop. Caitlyn two. You were just not buying a Caitlyn two. That's how committed he is. Slamming. I love that augment. Ooh, is there any reason to take support cash? Unified is pretty weak early at this point of the game. Slamming. Mm, Morello steadfast. Wait, wait. There's a rod and a glove. Hold on. Do you guys know how in, in, in on BuzzFeed and uh, Cosmo magazine? They have like personality quiz like how much of percentage are you like how basic are you or how how much new york is inside you right 
how much CN is in this guy right now? There's a rod and a glove. There's like two opposite sides of the magnet pulling towards each other right now. We're about to find out how per much percentage CN is this guy. He has to slam. He has to slam. He has to. Oh, oh. He put them together. It's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's magnets. JG Sunfire. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Do it. Oh. Oh, he's not very CN. He's not very CN. Man, this guy. <laughs> I'm telling Xi Jinping. <clears throat> it's about to be Morello. I mean, Morello's the better slam for sure. It's just, I, I just want to do a little bit about China and JG. It's just funny. They, they do it like... 50% of the time, which is still way higher than a lot of other people would expect it to be. But Morello is like a much better, a much better slam by far. By like a lot. Why not Morello and Steadfast? Uh, because, well, one, uh, Steadfast Heart is uh, not nearly as good right now on units like Yasuo. Yasuo scales off of things like uh, resistances, not off of things like Steadfast. So it's not even like as insane of an item as you would want on him. Plus, it, it commits his glove, which right now, if he wants to stay open to playing things like Kaisa, which he very much is, like he has Fortune on his bench, he gives up this ability to make Last Whisper. Uh, also, it doesn't look like he's streaking because he's just playing slamming with no levels. So he's just trying to like greed his econ a little bit here. Right, he's not pushing levels. So uh, the, the onus isn't on him to right now try and like be as strong as possible. So Morello is a good enough uh, item to start playing around, but you don't have to slam uh, that fast. Also, Vest is like pretty good of a component right now because you can make things like Titans. You can use things like um, Bramble Vest so on and so forth because Bramble is really important against like Kaisa Burst so it's, it's not even like you're unhappy to play around Vest last patch Vest was pretty terrible this patch Vest is pretty good also this is game three. Oh yeah you're right you're right this is game three this is game three still don't know what portal it is honestly did anyone catch what portal it was Is Bard still good? Uh, he honestly is probably B tier. B for Bard. B for bad. Bard, more like bad. Looks like gold subscription. Bard is decent, but viewers just spam badge whenever someone plays Bard, so no streamers play it. <laughs> that is not true, because that would that would, that doesn't stop streamers from playing Yone and uh, other things. But also, isn't Bard is not badge? I actually think he's kind of cool. Isn't okay, guys? Are, isn't isn't Bard actually one of the cooler champions this set? He's gonna buy Team at the last second. Oh wait, everyone has three. <gasps> He didn't play Fortune because he thought he was going to queue into the Loose Streak player. I think Bard is actually pretty cool. Anybody who hates Bard is just mad that they lost so much LP to him. Like that he, he that other people use Bard to climb so much LP. But I think Bard is actually really fun. <clears throat> And in fact, I think in the future, when we re when we reflect on set 11, people are going to be like, man, remember Bard was like a really fun three cost. I'm like, oh, dude, I loved Bard. The Rage Blade through all the meeps. And... You know why? It's because that's what you guys say about everything else. That's, you guys say that about dragons. You guys say that about hero augments. You guys say that about legends. <clears throat> I've talked to enough TFT players to know that you guys are kind of full of baloney.
According to tftacademy.com, Bard is A tier. You know what? I resent that. I'm going to demote him right now, live in the flesh. Where are you, Bard? Where are you, Bard? You're going down. Bard altruist. Do -do 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 -do. And I'm demoting Bard. I'm demoting Bard. Update. Demoted. Bard is a cool design, but it isn't hard to balance. It isn't hard to balance a champ that just scales attack speed. Not really. <clears throat> there's theoretically a balance point for like all these different stats it's just that it's trickier when there's other things like Gintu's Ridge Blade that can get out of control but I don't think it's like particularly saying dude he is so degen oh my god he's gonna agree wait but does he win anyways does he win anyways because he has he has two items he doesn't. He doesn't. He griefed the other four. Wait. Oh my God. The commitment. The commitment. He didn't even pick up his orbs either, so we can get slam and value. Wow. 18 out of 20. Wow. Man. And I thought North America was DGen. If I was the other guy, I'd be so tilted. He he purposely didn't collect three rounds of fortune just to sell and play two out of three fortune to grief the other guy. This guy is vicious. The ultimate rat yeah like big time big time and he didn't get tiny titans or anything to get rewarded for it but it's all good man i'm getting more dogged again i'm 48 lp masters partially due to your streams slash vod's hey revive demons congratulations 40 lp masters not bad That's pretty good. Find Vintage Duelist. Do you think they should make Ginsu's unique? No, I think... Uh, I think Rage Blade is a really fun item. And making it less playable, less good, it makes the game less fun. Remember, You have to remember one really important thing about games, especially games like TFT. People like doing powerful stuff because uh, if... If you just did everything, if everything was just very middling and mediocre and like, okay, fine tuned balance and like, eh, it's, it's all right. But people love doing really wild, powerful stuff. Those are memorable moments. What they don't like is when other people, other players do powerful stuff to them. But they love it when they do powerful stuff because it's awesome. I'm constantly reminded by... <clears throat> There's like a when I, when I played Hearthstone, I don't know if you guys play any of you guys played Hearthstone, but back when I played Hearthstone, there was a group of players who regularly yearned and pined for the days of playing cards with no texts. They were like, remember when we would at four mana play this four or five minion, this four or five creature, and it did nothing. It was just a four or five, and it was like, dude, th that was the best. It was called the Chill and Yeti. Dude, we used to just on four, turn four, just play to four or five. And it was like, man, those were awesome. That was peak Hearthstone. No, it wasn't. That was boring as shit. It was just, just played a four, four cost four or five. Like, wow. Amazing. Then what happened? Did you attack with it? And like, yeah, man, it was fucking awesome. You know what? They ruined the goddamn game. <laughs> Heaven forbid your cards do something else. Anyways, it was, it was it was a hilarious amount of discourse about people who's like, man, you know, it'd be great if our cards didn't do anything. Yeah, that would be a successful game. Amazing. <clears throat> Anyways, I, I digress. People really like doing powerful stuff in the game. If it, if it was just like vanilla, like, well, 
you just get a little bit of attack speed a little bit of attack damage a little bit of health you know what's, you know what's one of the most boring augments in the game tons of stats that that augment is actually like kind of solid but it is the definition of a boring augment it just does it's just like okay i get four ap four ad 40 health you know it's just like yeah all right cool <laughs> and, but it's it's actually kind of good but it's just uh <clears throat> five on his fortune uh-oh and we just won uh are we cashed out though what well, is this it's just i can't go for a rejuice but another zeke's is pretty good he's got double zeke's now he's just missing the garen needs the bt titans to garen and then go for the spin to win build <clears throat> Like, you know what was fun? Dark Flight Zeke's. You sacrificed, like, one shitter Dark Flight with a Zeke's, and all of a sudden, 20 Zeke's on your board. Like, what? How, what, what is that? What even is that? You just sacrificed one Zeke's, and all of a sudden, like, your entire board has, like, 20 Zeke's? I mean, that was pretty awesome, right? I was, it was really imbalanced. Really, really imbalanced. But it was super funny. <clears throat> You sacrifice one, one protector's value, and you just all of a sudden have an unkillable board. Everyone just has protector's value. Man, those are the days. Those are the moments players remember. He has any pair. Bug abusing, slamming. One last time. Do not pick up your item orbs. Do not pick your item orbs. Oh, oh. Nice. So you get four EXP instead of two. Nice. All right. <clears throat> Does he just play Kaisa every game? Is that what it, what he did? Probably. I try not to like look at these ahead of time. But it looks like he did play Kaisa almost every game. He is, but it, it is it is a good way to explain how to or show you guys how Fortune works, like how he basically plays Fortune every game. <clears throat> set point five is a wildly underrated set man but 7.0 was like bad you have to admit 7.0 was like truly horrendous uh, in terms of like the player experience it was bad it was not only was the the game kind of just like not that great design wise but it was just it was bugs the, the reason why 7.5 was back the 7.0 was back is the amount of bugs in the game there's so many bugs that's why i don't like it that much like in my opinion bugs that like make the game literally unplayable or game breaking bugs like the astro toggling just makes it like the worst experience for me like bad balance it is what it is but you're always gonna have stretches of, of balance where it's good and bad you can hope for the best but it is what it is when the game's like unplayable because people are abusing like bad bugs or just things don't work that's like enraged that's completely enraging to me it feels like a waste of time 7.0 greater than greater than greater than greater than greater than greater than, greater than 7.5 who modded this guy You got punished for buying units in 7.0. You got punished because economically you couldn't afford it. And and, and, and and assuming you even have the gold, let's say you start off with a gold open like, like with a with a trait that's an econ opener that lets you play the game. If not, you're shit out of luck. Guess what? Oh, it's 2-1. You don't have Astral, you don't have Yordle, you don't have ship, you don't do you don't have a way to generate uh econ. I guess you're just behind by like 25 gold in a in a game where it requires you to have a million gold to hit because everything was twice as expensive. And guess what? You clicked on something that was twice as expensive. You don't get to click on and on half the cast. You clicked on the purple unit. Well, guess what? You can't click on any green units. You can't click on any yellow units. You can't click on anything because it disables the traits. You just can't click on them. Yeah. 
the dragons didn't allow you to play them with other dragons so it just it, it just divorced you from every other type of tree that you could play so you could play one tree Going for a Azir with a glove. I just got shat on by Nar3. Well, thanks for sharing. We just recently updated Nar to be an A tier. I'm sorry about that. I, I Your opponent probably looked up TFT Academy and gained a lot of LP. <clears throat> I claim responsibility for that. I've been getting hard owned this patch. How do I pull it back? Uh, wait for the next patch. That might sound like a like a <laughs> like a jaded answer, but the the new patch is literally in like thirty six hours. So if you just if you just wait, the new patch, you can just wait for it, and then uh, oh sorry, you could uh you could wait for the new patch and just let us figure things out and then try it again. By the way, I'm pretty sure no one thinks next patch is going to be really balanced. I'm pretty sure most people think next patch is going next patch is going to be very, very wild. So, uh, if you're like, man, next patch is going like it better be good, otherwise I'm quitting TFT for the third time this month. You know, you like threatened more dog. And you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm only going to spend sixty two dollars this set instead of like six hundred dollars. You know, whatever. Uh. I'm pretty sure next patch is going to be really imbalanced. But I think next patch is going to be fun. Whoa. He juked uh, the Zephyr and the Shroud. Look at that. The APM. Okay, he didn't even match up against it. <clears throat> if you're like, I, I still want to play this patch. I just want to like have something to play. Try out some Gnar reroll. That is the new hotness. Nar Kindred. You can play Nar Senna. It kind of depends on your tattoo. Those are rookie numbers. I quit TFT thrice a day. <laughs> this Ray RNG. The problem with this patch is that it's just very narrow with what's consistently good and every other game like you have to basically either commit yourself to playing a lot of kaisa and then if you know if you have a spot for reroll go for it or you just commit yourself to pure reroll like alan alan zq the dude just like reroll like 90 90 of his games and just got rank one eu <clears throat> and I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way like i think that's correct i think like i think the the way to to play the patch is just like memorize the conditions of like what makes each of these reroll comps individually strong and like just roll and and hit and then if if not if you're if you're in a spot to play kaisa try to play kaisa why is everyone playing lux in my games i, th I think we're at the end of the patch and a lot of people are desperate to just try like to play other things that they think like like for me right now, I'm trying to just play like fun games that are like kind of tuber worthy in a way. Like I, th I don't think I've skipped recombob or everything must go even once <laughs> in the past like like three four days. I think I just like pick 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 them every single time, even if it's not good. I sit in front of the Yone too. Or Yone 3, rather. Ooh. Not looking good. Okay, so this is a fifth so far right now. Yone 3. Duelists. I mean, I think what's fun about the patch is um, I do think playing the Kaisa line is fun, but what's not fun is the fact that so many people are contesting you. So like, I do think the I do think Kaisa is 
not easy to play and also i think she can be really rewarding and feels fun to play but she is very punishing if you're not good at her um and i'll and i think also she is uh really easy to mess up and also you're, you it, it, everyone can test it so it's just like it's just a bad combination i think that's why people get really tilted playing kaisa i, I think i think the most tilted players are kaisa players or people that want to play kaisa because they're so desperately trying to play for a four cost and they just look around they're like suck on kaisa one galia one all game and they just they just die and they're just like so mad I think a lot of people who play a lot of Kaisa's patch kind of know what I'm talking about. It's a, it's a very fun tree, tree to play. Like, there's fun things to do in this patch, and if they go well, if you have a good game, there's, like, things about this patch that are really fun. Like, how many times this patch did I play freaking, like, uh, Story Champion or Drop Blossom or something like that? Or, or Th Ethereal Blade. That was cool. They buffed, they buffed a lot of that stuff. The hero augments have been really fun to play this patch. <clears throat> when did you say your podcast with Dishlip was going to be? It was going to be in two weeks. The, it'll be, we're going to try to record it the day after the Tactician's Cup. So it's going to be the, the Tactician, the, 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 it's going to be the Tactician's Cup. And then on the Monday after, Dishlip and I are going to sit down and record some audio and talk about team fight tactics my god and it's gonna be a focus on the game and the meta and less about like oh oh it's a fifth now that, that that took the wind of ourselves i kind of thought we could pull it to a top four it's still fifthable it's still fifthable or fourthable rather you can still top four that was a that was a gut punch the podcast with me and Bryce is dedicated to like the player narrative. So if you're going to be like, what do you guys think about Setsuko's climb? What do you think about like China? Who's better? NA, EU, et cetera, like all that stuff. That's the podcast with Bryce. If you're like looking for people to talk about like TFT, the game, and it's an audio only podcast, and you don't mind it. <gasps> he misses Zeke's. Edge. Wait, it's just Yone 2. No, no, never mind. It's Yone 3. Wait, but the Yone trolled this fight. Wait, did we win this fight? Kaisa cast again? Oh my god. He might be a genius. He might be a genius. Because he positioned Kaisa there. And like, like, like the way the Yone dashed avoided Kaisa the entire time. Did you end up giving all the prize? Oh, I, I need to, I need to, let me, let me message you afterwards, Raptor, and sync on that. Cause I, I need to, yeah, we, I need to make sure I'm giving all the prizes. I, I, if you are here and you won some prizes, Raptor either DMs it to you or we need to DM it to you. Um, I specifically need, wh whoever won the little legend plushie Raptor, I need their address so I can ship them. Someone won a little legend plushie. The bun bun, you see that? The, the little bun bun plushie, someone won this. For uh, signing up for my boot camp team. Oh, yeah, and Fjord won a little legend plushie, too. My moderator, that's right. Not rig, not rig. He he won it fair and square. This patch had two a few too many just giga nut stuff as well. Fortune and an EMG alongside fine vintage and Kaiser Lottery making it feel super high really compared to that. Yeah. Yeah, and also there's like a bunch of stuff with encounters that can just like screw your game. Yeah. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take this patch personally if you're like man i usually i usually feel like I'm, I'm a diamond player and i'm stuck in like platinum right now or something like that i, I, I wouldn't take it personally also a marathon not a sprint oh this person's playing a loon three. Oh, it's midnight siphon yorick titans titans bt yorick oh wait a second 
Oh my god, we don't win this fight as Yorick? That's insane. He has Shen 3, Yorick 3, Alun 3. Oh my god. Is the podcast with Bryce out already? No, we haven't done it for this set yet. That starts next week. Uh, the podcast with me and Bryce is going to be next Thursday. Oh, man. It's going to be a lot of content. Podcast with me and Bryce. Podcast with me and Dish Soap. Uh, Dish Soap and my... The, the, the TFT Academy podcast is going to be audio only. And it's not going to be streamed on Twitch. I think that's the kind... That, 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 that'll be the best way we can get it out quickly. As in, like, it won't even require, like, you know, one or two days. We can probably get it out the, in the next few hours. Hopefully. Kind of pads. We need, we need to talk to the editors. What? This guy scammed the fourth. He scammed another four. He went, his scores for four are four, four, four. He scammed them all. Okay, he didn't scam them all. He, he got scammed only two of them. And it's Yone, Duelists, and... Midnight Siphon Yorick, top three. That's kind of cool. I want to see how well the Midnight Siphon Yorick does. Are you hyped for the NBA playoffs? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I haven't been following the NBA nearly as closely as I want to be the past uh, few months. I've just been really busy. I think with the pregnancy and the baby. On top of the usual stuff, it's just got to give up following some stuff, you know, less time. Most of my updates these days are just through like discussions, right? Like everyone's talking about, uh, is, is Victor Wimbayama having the greatest rookie season ever? No, unless you're a Spurs fan, then yes, easily duh. Also, this dude pulls up from half court and he just, and he's, and he just, Cashes the three. Like, what? <laughs> this dude's literally cheating. Anyways. Um, this guy took heroic grab bag team building and then hit everything and then top dude with uh, with duelist with locket, by the way. Four dupes. Bola bear three. Exalted Duelists. Who are the Exalted units? Lissandra. It's probably like Lissandra. Uh, Irelia. Uh, Darius or something like that. Or I don't know. Diana. Probably Diana. Brennan, can you talk more about why we shouldn't feel bad if we feel stuck in the ELO we're not, we're usually not in? <laughs> Am I your therapist? Okay. All right, C's, listen, listen, look at me, look at me. You are not measured. Your worth is not measured based on the number on a screen. It's just pixels. They're just numbers. If you are normally a diamond player and right now you're stuck in platinum emerald, it's still early in the set. You will get there. And the only people that truly care about rank outside of just like one, a few toxic players, maybe on ladder who you shouldn't care about anyways, like caring about everyone's opinion in the world is asinine. You'll, you'll never actually be able to, to appease everybody. So who cares about everyone's opinions on rank? Only a few people will ever truly care besides yourself about your own rank and so the only person that's really putting the, the that weight of that measurement is you. So the moment you let go of it, the moment you'll be free from the sadness that you're not at that rank that you want. And also this game is all luck, right? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, uh, let's go into game number four. Go into game number four.
Unless that number is your bank account. Eh. As long as you have enough money, like, obviously money does matter. Like, anyone who says that money doesn't matter is like, uh, honestly, just, they're just privileged people who, or they're, they're people who have found true happiness and they don't care about it. Um, and it's good for them, but money matters to a certain point. And then money almost doesn't matter at all. It's just a pure ego thing. This snapshot thing is very interested in my rank. I mean, that's that's because you're put you're subjecting yourself to that. You're asking to get measured. You're asking to get measured versus other people. Okay, game four. Dude, so much gold. Did he start off with this Alawi? Was it a three cost? I don't think so. I think it's just a gold opener. Three exalted. Oh, you know what this might be? This might be the the Lux Teemo exalted. Oh, no way. It's Lux and Sivert. No, it can't be. It can't be because it has to be Lux and Teemo. And that one is really cool. Bow opener. It's a single bow. It's a Kaisa game. Wandering trainer. Oh, it's champion delivery. Lucky Ricochet. I want the wandering trainer. Damn, man. This guy, this guy actually just straight up goes for it every single game. That's crazy. Kaisa one tricking. <laughs> uh. But I mean, he got number one in points, right? So if, if you're wondering really like how to climb this patch, this is like literally what, what top players are doing. This boss should be a Kaisa game. I mean, the last couple games you got top four, they're all Kaisa games. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. Muppy Softo. Thank you for three months. Thanks so much. Whenever I feel bad about my rank, I think about Soju and how he had to do a 30 hour grind to qualify for snapshots. Hey, what, what do you mean? Like, you feel. Can you say more about that? Like you, you feel like, uh, so, thinking about Soju makes you feel better or what? You're just, you're just reminded of him climbing. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Or are you just like, you know, about your day and you just randomly think about Soju? Midnight Siphon. Okay, so we see Midnight Siphon. There's still value. If you're like, okay, he just keeps playing Kaisa. The whole point is you have to evaluate what's happening in the lobby, right? I totally understand if you're just like, yeah, another Kaisa game. But uh, the important, if you're trying to look a little deeper, you have to think about like what's happening in the context of the lobby. Another, another person took Midnight Siphon into Yorick. That guy is Bard. We got a Bard player. Hey, Chums just gifted one community sub. Okay, sh business. Hey, I eat Chums. Thank you so much for the gift of sub. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> he's fast five. I mean, he's trying to push tempo right now. That's actually interesting. In the past couple games, he's been playing like Fortune and Loose Streak. It's been kind of awkward. Now he gets to actually try to see if he can play from ahead. What doesn't kill you, Fortune? I kind of missed the Gamble coin flips. Oh, from like last year. The problem is that uh, when I did it, it, uh, it, it always detracted from the stream. And then it was like 
I kept having to delay it to the point where um because doing the whole thing took like 10 to 15 minutes so it was just it was, it was a very disruptive thing and then also uh, I started uploading my VODs to YouTube and everything like that so I can't really play music that's copyrighted but we, yeah, we could still do like a uh, coin flip, uh, gambas if you guys wanted. But yeah, the, the, the whole presentation back in the day, I know, what you, I know what you mean. It was fun time. Maybe we'll bring it back one day. Don't worry. But hey, I, uh, I have to be a responsible parent now. Chef Merc just gifted five community subs. W Glaze. Yay, yo, Chef Merc. My God, five gifted. Thank you so much. What do, what, to what do I owe the occasion? Congrats on the baby. Oh, thank you very much. I'll tell, I'll tell him uh, that you gifted five. I'm talking to my wife's belly every night, you know. I'll be like, hey, <clears throat> Chef Merc gifted five. And he says, congrats. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's very generous. Everyone's so nice. Okay, uh, so in this spot, we lost our streak, so I guess we're just gonna make 30. We do have a bard player. Oh, we have a bard player, a Felix player, a Yone player, a Yorick player, a Kaisa player, a Fortune player, and one other person. <laughs> OJ Milks just gifted five community subs. W Glaze. OJ Milks, thank you so much as well. Oh my god, you guys are so kind. Thank you so much, everybody. I could not join the train. Nah, it's all... Or you could not join the train. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for always hanging out and being a, a big part of the community. Don't you worry, guys. Those, uh, those subs will go to a good place. AKA paying the, the TFT Academy dev team. <laughs> well, actually right now, uh, just being very transparent, what we're actually doing is paying the legal fees because uh, we recognize that uh, it's actually a thing. Like the, the website, the website is actually becoming an act is, is becoming a real thing. So we need to take it seriously and not just be like, well, this is just like a passion project. So uh, we need to do like business filings and incorporation stuff. So. Um, we're actually using Bryce's, uh, legal firm to do it. So we're, we're, the legal fees is basically what we're paying for next. Wow. He just gets dropped the last whisper and he can make a warm mugs. Okay. What if he just goes for Sivir 3? Sivir 3 reroll with Lucky Ricochet. Make my day. Come on. You won't. Sivir reroll. It's not even that. It's not even that bad, by the way. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Sivir three reroll with uh, Lucky Ricochet, Sivir three, and you just push tempo and you hit four trick shots. It's actually still pretty good. Yeah, it's actually really funny meeting it with Bryce to talk in a legal aspect because we're like, hey, we want to incorporate. This is kind of like uh, the the way we want to set things up. Um, you know, do we want to incorporate in this state and these other kind of things? And there's like so many different small things that you have to do to get things uh, all ready to go. Everything must go, but he's not allowed to pick it. Remember, it is banned. Stationary support. Got a Zeke's. Nah, that's so insane. You just, you just got a Zeke's like that. Double Sivir. Yeah, this spot is so good. This spot is so good. Oh, going for the reposition to get doubles Sivir value. Touching Sivirs. Okay, never mind. Hey, Amanda, how you doing? Right, any tips for a gold player who has no idea what to do and panics once the original match plan fumbles, for example, when I get contested? uh yeah sure so if you if you're panicking once the game starts uh when your when your primary game plan is not going correctly uh breathe it's really important 
Uh, a lot of times, you know, people panic and they're doing things too fast. And the, a lot of times when people freeze up is because they're thinking about too many things instead of just doing something. Uh, but the first thing that I want to say is if you're getting contested, that's okay. Getting contested is just part of TFT. It's part of life, honestly, if you really think about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> If, if you try to go about life always being uncontested at everything you're probably it's like really really unlikely that's ever going to happen people are going to want to do jobs that are similar to you people are probably going to be interested in potential romantic partners that are similar to like that that you're also interested in like that's just, just what happens you're going to get contested and learning how to play contested is like a valuable skill so think of it instead of panicking like oh god what do i do think of it as like okay what can i do what can I do? Like, what can I do right now? Because I'm contested and like, what's the best thing that I could do at this moment? And a lot of times, by the way, pivoting off is like one of the worst things you can do because uh, pivoting is generally really hard and expensive and costly, which are like kind of the same thing, but expensive gold wise and costly in terms of resources. Like you can't like pivot off an augmenter easily. If you take Midnight Siphon, you pivot off of Yorick as a reroll because someone is holding Yorick's. That's just going to make your plans so much worse. What is this? What the heck is this? It just gets a champion delivery on a, on a Kaisa. So anyways, yeah, you're going to get contested. That's just what life is. You can't uh, go about daily living, hoping that you're uncontested on everything. And, and if you do, you panic. Embrace the challenge. My crush is five man contested brother. She's meta AF. Well, you, you, you can't all bot for her if there's five of you. Who has the known pivoter copy pasta? Yeah, the one from Darth Noob. <laughs> the one where it's like, uh, did Rosa Parks pivot off her her seat on the bus? It, it went pretty extreme. It went pretty extreme. Sometimes you do pivot. Sometimes you do pivot, especially if you're a failing business. Sometimes you do pivot. We found an early Lissandra, by the way. Did you print an item? Are we printing? Ooh. My crush is Kaisa. How do I do? Guys. I don't think I understand the question. Hey, buddy. I'm around if you still want to do the thing. Oh, sure. I'm I've kind of in the middle of uh, a chat therapy session. Feel free. One of my buddies wants to join and watch. Her name is Bloody. The Fortnite has everything. Is doing our. Uh, I'm doing all right. Did the Titanic pivot off its course? I mean, I don't think it's it's it's, it's uh, what the heck? Wait a second. A sec. Okay, this is is this champion deliver? Is this uh, is this uh or is this champion conference? Am I misunderstanding? Is this champion conference? Was this tailored? He got, he got, he got a Christ in the middle of the stage, right? What? How did he get that? Oh, oh, come on. How did that even happen? Rain last whisper. Wait, where's the, where's the rain item? He lost because he, he's down to rain item. Little buddies. Okay, so we have uh, two rods and a tier. What do we do with these items? 
you know what I'm down for this Lissandra oh I was gonna say I'm down for this Lissandra prints some items man this guy's kind of a cheater Ilios 3 Deathblade Rageblade IE wait this guy took big gains whoa have any, has anyone taken big gains yet this set big gains faded dude he's playing drain tank aphelios wait it's kind of working what the heck okay okay I, I i'm learning a little tech here this is some tech what's the point of having kale in the corner because he wants to have the best of everything he wants to buff the kaisa via the sivir wants to buff the uh kale via via this hello hello how are hey. you how's it going uh not too bad not too bad want to introduce yourself to anybody who's never seen you before oh yeah hi chat i'm bloody I am a newer TFT streamer, uh, but I've been friends with Dan for a long time. Oh, all right. I, huh? Sorry, so, so you're, you're kind of low. One, one more time. Oh, hold on. My cat is nibbling on me. Boba, what are you doing? Stop it. What are you doing? She's being playful. Anyway, hi, I'm Bloody. I am a TFT streamer. I am relatively new to the game. I started playing in, like, December. Um... And yeah, I've been friends with Dan for a long time. And I am chilling tonight. So nice. That's pretty much all you need to know about me, I think. Okay. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> What's up? Uh, not too bad. We're watching uh, we're watching China, a, a Chinese player. He got this is ice ice is a top competitive player from china he got third at the world championships last set uh they have their big stack field tournament it was like a, a big open and it has like a bunch of the top players from china competing and he got first in the group so we're just kind of watching the vod discussing some of his plays talking about life yeah i could tell i tuned in it was like a little therapy session yeah some player, no. some TFT players need it. Trust me, they could they could use some therapy. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, why get therapy when you could just buy TFT loot boxes? <laughs> uh, retail therapy. Do we? Yeah. Uh, we're not. We took a sword, but we're not going to slam Shojin here. That's pretty interesting. Does he win anyways? Ooh, that's pretty close. Shojin that's pretty is close. like positive delta, but seems very slammable, right? Like, maybe you just wait till this encounter, though. Yeah, you can wait for the encounter here. Shojin's not bad on Kaisa. It's just not, like, amazing. It's, like, it's it's an okay item. Yeah. I figure with Kaisa, too, it's not unreasonable to be pickier, but, like, I could be wrong. Takes three gold. This is actually a really cool encounter. This one says, uh, set your win streak or lose streak to six, and or you can just gain three gold. And so it's like whether or not you think you can continue a streak if you want to keep winning, keep losing. Huh. Right before PvE, though, it's interesting to just not pick either of them. Yeah, it's instead of gambling, it just takes the three gold guarantee. A lot of people take the three gold because it's it's really hard to predict at this point. Man, imagine not gambling. That's just self-control. Thoughts on Silas being collateral damage on a Titan's nerf? Uh, Titans was always okay on on Silas, not like uh, not like his true like his true bis. This is a good item that you played a lot of times because it was good on so many other units. But si you know what actually is really good with Silas? You just try fully adaptive. Fully adapt adaptive Silas is actually the nuts. Which is triple adaptive. Uh, you you don't have to go triple adaptive, but like double adaptive. Oh, is fully adaptive. Usually... Oh, 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 the augment. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You, you could uh, you could you could just play like two and then like spark, watch him go to town. Chojin kind of has bad synergy with the fury tattoo. Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong about that. I think it's just a like wait till after Raptor's angle. Like it might end up being Chojin. 
Uh, that or Deathblade. Mm. What are you doing with this tier? Barello. Oh, okay. You can actually... Okay, so you can also know the frontline item as well. So it's, you can do Sword. Oh, Eternal Winter is so good. Ooh. Gunblade. I see. <laughs> so we did go Shojin. Mm. Shoujin I mean, Shojin's Shoujin Zai is very good. Shojin Zai is very good. So it's fascinating. So, so he knew that he always wanted a Shojin Kaisa. He just wanted to make, or, or Zai rather, wanted to always make another frontline item and got out of Winter. So then decided to go for Gunblade. Ooh. Mm. So this is just like long term planning. He has enough health that he can just play for getting better items for Zaya. Is that the angle here? I mean, we're just we're just going to nine, and we're just going to basically two star our board and go for a better front line. Like Garen gets replaced. Yeah, you just start putting in dragon lords from here. Uh, dragon lords are just like really expensive these days. So like, uh, because you're going to nine to play for. Uh, lower cost units and you don't really get there unless you can it's like unless you're like super high rolling so a lot of the times mm -hmm. they just actually just play this board and they just go four bruisers yeah well for, four bruisers for trick shot is like the standard right we just they go for a higher cap eventually yeah yeah but the games end too quick or the games are decided too quickly like this is like stage five two right so this is like oh yeah almost the game's okay. like almost over that's why it feels like you know like in, in in other parts of the world, the meta is like slower, and also in tournament tempo tends to just be higher in tournament in general because players are just playing on average stronger boards, and and in mm -hmm. solo queue on ladder, people tend to play weaker boards all the time, and so you just get away with a lot more. But not in these kinds of environments, so like you're you're, so, you're you see a little bit of how it's like five three, but the game's like you you just feel like you're about to die at any second. So you just have to stick with it because the four bruiser four trick shot is like more often what you end up staying staying on yeah that's wild though for reference for chat i am a master player at this point i'll be a challenger player in a bit but so you know the angle from which my questions come from they come from like informed but not fully informed but, how like, informed, has your climb been lately oh my climb yeah oh, <laughs> it's actually been really it's been smooth on stream and then i've been queuing a lot from my phone from bed so oh you play mobile like, oh gosh yeah it's kind of like daytime bloody's doing great and nighttime bloody's having a hard time with it <laughs> but oh, it's wow. fine because it kind of inflates my avp on stream so it's, it's kind, <laughs> of a, kind of a nice strategy okay uh we need another item for zaya the only other item for zaya is like edge of knights titans oh udir udir items udir items Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I, st I still feel very weird about Morello on Timo, but Chojin on Zaya. Like, I get that Zaya too does a lot, but like, why not put the Morello on her then? Is it just because Timo spreads it really well? Uh, well, yeah, Timo's just a better user of it because he gets to he cast more often, and uh, Zaya takes a while to ramp up. She only Zaya only casts like once or twice a fight. And so, like, um, the, the impact of the Morello is a lot less. Plus, I think that the stats synergize better with Teemo's abilities and traits because he's AP. That's fair. It's just kind of breaking my brain to be like, okay, you get one item, and you get one item, and there's, like, five rounds left in this game. It's just interesting. It's yeah, like but like, just, just, just that... track how Teemo's uh, mushrooms are, like, bouncing around, though. You kind of see how oh, the, yeah. the Morello is, like, pretty impactful. No, it makes a lot of sense. I think my brain is just trapped in convention of, like three items on a unit is better than things spread out kind of thing but i think it does make a lot of sense all right why, why are we still asking about gunblade raptor gunblade's like fine it's not it's not that terrible also some of our damage is compensated because we have uh radiant last whisper so like our item quality isn't that bad you're making it sound like gunblade's like the worst item possible for uh for kaisa i think it's all right i feel like our other slams were pretty poopy like if you slam something that's not gunblade then you're left with like pure ap and you're like hmm. we could have went deathblade but then we would be left with uh two rods one rod i don't remember two rods oh we just got farmed by this lux wait midnight siphon oh wait no it's, it's exalted it's the exalted lux oh wait a second midnight siphon exalted lux three with uh with, with with a loon carry 
Okay, I don't know if I've seen that. My goodness. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. Boom, thanks so much. Okay, you guys are yapping so much about this. Let me go ahead and look up the stats. Let me let me look up the statistics. Four trick shots. Kaisa. Three items. Gunblade. Let's see. <clears throat> Gunblade. Positive 27 delta. Okay, that's not that good. But uh yeah, it's bad. it's it's honestly like okay it might the stats don't look good on it but uh the average the 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 average placement of this is probably because people didn't get to slam it in optimal spots and they're just stuck with extra rod well the other angle is like i mean i'm just trying to justify a player who's a lot better than me so my thought is that he's probably just more clued into the fact that he needs a bit of healing assistance for his front line because his front line is a little wimpier our front line is pretty good now because we have udir too but uh like it wasn't right. Yeah. Also, isn't healing good on specifically Galio while he does his thing? Like he raises his defenses, and it's a good opportunity for him to get sure. healed. Sure, it is. It is Galio one. So like, a gun, actually, you're right. Gunblade is better with uh, Eternal Winter to keep it alive a little bit longer. It is Galio one though, so I don't really expect it to tank that much. Yeah. It's just a thought that like the delta is is like doesn't actually explain the specific scenario. Like the exact spot actually explains like oh like the healing is useful. Seven story weaver recon two. Oh, Galia lived for a decent amount of time. Oh oh, our backline is disappearing. This Udir's gone. Oh, that was so close. Oh my goodness. What up, Beppo? How you doing, buddy? Oh, hi, Beppo. Gunblade Dev? Yeah, that's right. Also, now, the final boss, Midnight Siphon Yorick with uh, Lux 3. Which actually... Oh, wait, is he playing 5 Exalted? Hold on a second. Oh, he's playing 5 Behemoth. 5 Behemoth. 3 Exalted. Yeah, that was 3 Exalted. I was wondering if it was uh, the all 2 cost Exalted. 2 healthy midnight siphon oh lux is lux is going to angle towards our kaisa wait they baited us because they made it seem like lux is going to go on the other side oh never mind trick shot this trick shot things wait this shen might do shen thing no okay yeah the exalted is 2 2 cost and the rest are 1 cost okay Did you catch what augments our opponent has? Uh, Midnight Siphon, Too Healthy, uh, and something else. I don't remember. I'm just so curious if it's Little Buddies. That would be very adaptive sick. Adaptive Udir. I thought Disso was talking about yesterday how Adaptive Udir doesn't make much sense. because, But I guess it's better than nothing. Two item, uh, even if it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Okay. Maybe the separation of a loon and Lux will make sure so the trick shots don't bounce, bounce, and kill everything. Actually, I don't even know. Lucky Ricochet technically just, like, gets to the backline anyways because the extra yeah. bounce just assassinates it. Also, that target dummy like ends up being really clutch. Whoa! <gasps> oh, my God. Okay. You know, I'm pretty sure these are all winnable from both sides. This, this looks pretty even to me. Yeah. This looks pretty looks winnable. Looks very positioning based. Yeah. Another so gunblade diff, Drew. <laughs> now, don't don't even refer, don't even uh, count the fact that maybe if we had a third damage on him, this this fight wouldn't be close. But. You know. <laughs> Well, as long as we don't get the flora wiped with us, then like a third Zaya item is going to be huge. Udir is now focusing on the back line. Oh, I see. I see. I see. It's really about whether or not Udir can get to the back line and clear everything in time to clean up. Okay, so that's what everything's about right now. 
don't you i think i feel like i feel like if you know he's gonna go top right to get umbral value then you can put your trick shots in the bottom right you go you go uh kale then kaisa then zaya then target dummy from right to left and then um you have your trick shots try to bounce so that way it focuses down the lux a little bit faster because i think if you're if you're on the opposite side there's a chance it doesn't hit the lux and the loon right i'm not sure I'm not sure as well. He's rolling for Galio here, yeah? Yeah, he's just rolling for upgrades. It's the last upgrade. GS. Ooh, that's a pretty big deal. Third item on Kai mm -hmm. on Zaya. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's waiting for the last second. This guy's a genius. He knows exactly what's going on. The, this is the exact position I was talking about. Yeah. Wait, the guy read it. Oh, no. That's <laughs> not good. Except the Sudir might... Hmm? What's this? Which, which direction? No, York is he turned go? around. York turned around. The York turned around so like close. a beast. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. He. I think Ice made the right play, but I think his opponent out read it and outplayed him pretty hard. Oh man, that's sick. That's okay. Second's pretty good though. Second's pretty good. Also, the comp is pretty sweet. Midnight siphon York Lux three. Ooh, I, I haven't played that even one time. I haven't seen that. I like how you just didn't mention the Alune 3 either. I mean, Alune 3 contributed as well, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, she feels relatively inconsequential, or just like in my mind. I mean, obviously, no, she, she's, it's a three star. She, she three definitely cost. did work. It's just, she's just generally not very consistent. So a lot of people don't don't really try to count on her to actually carry. You know, Chat makes a good point. If we had two gun blades, it would have been a first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we were allowed to equip the four a fourth item and a second gun blade, it, it definitely would have been a first. Okay, let me see. So we're gonna fast forward. Gun blade or death blade on Kaisa? Do you do you you know you're misrepresenting the arguments when you say that? Sorry. You're misrepresenting the argument when you say that because that he had he had to make the best items with the components he had. Raptor is deep in the rabbit hole of like big life regret around Hextech Gunblade. Adaptive is better than Shojin. Oh, that's is better on Zaya than Shojin is. Wait, really? Are you sure that, is is that is that is that that's news to me? I'm gonna look it up. Adaptive. Versus okay, but it's like really low sample size. How trustworthy is this? They're like the same. No, what? Just put it on Timo. Okay, but don't you want to uh, itemize your Zaya? Do you want to put two items on Timo and then no items on Zaya? When you're going when you're rolling at nine. Oh, oh. You were saying the adaptive helm out of the other components. Like the Shojin still existed. I mean the uh, uh, Deathblade is like way better on Kaisa for sure. Yeah. Is this player particularly known for anything? Playing really fast. He's uh he likes fast nining. He likes playing really fast. Uh, very quick. With his actions, does really quick transitions, really fast roll downs. Hmm. Mm hmm. That's dope. From this angle, like you wait, story weaver, to see what your augments are, right? Yeah, for the most part. Whoa. Sorry, I'm playing a little bit of background music. No, you're good. I was just missing out on the music, and now I'm hearing it. Gargantuan resolve with the BT. I mean, that's pretty. Oh, ah. Do we ever see another midnight siphon? That would've been cool. So Gargantuan... whoa, ribbon carry. Hold on, I've heard about this. <laughs> Wait, actually? No, it's not. It's not. It's just temporary. Okay. It's just temporary. I was but, like, there's uh... no way. This has to be a yoke.
uh yeah ice generally likes to play a lot of like fast nine likes to generally play high cap boards big gold a lot of gold big roll downs fast transitions uh quick swaps positioning stuff Can you tell the pros and cons about set 11? Sure. I think the pros are that it's fun. I think that it's very different to every game. Like encounters make the novelty of each game very high. Uh, I think the set is aesthetically very gorgeous. Like it's just very well done because the art art is really good. Um, and I think that there are legitimately really cool and fun designs. Uh, the cons of it are that encounters have immense amount of variance to it and volatility. So like, it's hard to have, like some people want more baseline consistency. Like if it feels like so much chaos is having every game, sometimes it feels like having a normal game of TFT is the outlier. That's why some people want things like Stillwater hold from set nine, where it's like they want no augment portals because they'd rather have a, a normal game of TFT instead of all this wacky, like, well, what if this game there are like no rules? And I'm reminded of the Meteos clip from League of Legends, if you guys remember that, where uh, he was like, he was making fun of Riot for being like too creative. Like, guys, what if we have a champion that doesn't attack, doesn't move, doesn't get any gold, but it's balanced at 50% win rate? Right, he, he makes he makes fun of like the the, the League of Legends designers get too crazy. Like that's kind of that's kind of what's going on with TFT sometimes. It's like, dude, what if we just have like like just insane amount of rules all packed into one game of TFT? That's kind of the downside of Set Eleven. Just feels like nonsense a lot of the times. But um, the best players still find a way to come up on top. Like I don't care how RNG and terrible you think Set Eleven is. I look, Setsuko is still rank one. Dishope is still rank two. Just like every other set. YB1, YB1 is still like 2000 LP, like 400 above everybody else. Jazz Latte is still rank one. Juan May is still rank one. So like, it doesn't matter how much you guys can, can, can moan and whinge about like TFT and the variance of set 11. Like the good players always find a way to rise to the top. So just stay mad. I think the reason people are upset is generally because it like encounters have such a high odds of playing on parts of the game people don't like. Like because they're so wide people will not think too much about the encounters that they don't mind or that they like, but they'll think really negatively about the ones that like, yeah. you know, like the Ash encounter, like someone might really hate it and then just think all encounters fucking suck. Um, I, I do think that's part of that for sure. I do think, yeah, I mean, like, it, it, and, and don't and don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not like saying every encounter is like really good. There's some absolute BS ones. Oh, for sure. But I think uh, it's just such yeah. a wide range of effects that like someone's going to find something that they don't like and it's going to like make their judgment call of encounters mm -hmm. at large uh, just generally worse. I think but that's I well think said. People, I mean, a, a lot of people, I'm just like seeing what friends are saying about this or uh, about the set and I feel like a lot of people are actually like ignoring the units and traits and synergies and just solely focusing on like, man, encounters are the worst. I hate Sit 11 yeah it's like a bummer. i mean i think i think it's an easy boogeyman to blame like oh i just don't like the how encounters can mess up your entire game and that's technically true that's yeah. technically true that's uh but it, it doesn't happen as often as people think it is compared to or rather people have more agency in the game than they think they do and and a lot of people feel like if there's a bad encounter that happens that they don't like then their game is ruined and like they they're automatically just like well this was an unlosable spot and i go bought four from it and yeah. it feels like that's not actually true but um it can be true if that's the way you always view it like it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy right yeah i mean it, it's also the matter of like not everyone is as good as the best players and like it, it's an interesting game philosophy is like if the best players can handle it does that mean that it's like yeah. a balanced mechanic or like you know do yes. you have to be this tall to be able to enjoy all the or like you know still play well through all the encounters kind of thing there's another element of it too that people don't play as much as the other players right i think there's a lot i think there's a good amount of you here in chat that don't have any delusions about tft you know that there's a lot of skill in the game it's one of the most skill expressive strategy games ever made you know that you know that the good players will always find a rise to the top but the reality is you don't take TFT that seriously. You play it mainly for fun and you only get a certain amount of games every day because you're busy because you have 
social obligations, IRL responsibilities, jobs, whatever that means, so on and so forth. You're gainfully employed, if you will. And uh, mm. and so you play three or four games and all of those games are just utter nonsense where it just feels like you get screwed and you're like, well, that's a bad experience. I don't enjoy this very much. And I think that's a really valid experience to not like encounters. But I feel like yeah. a lot of people are very, just like in a lot of other games of chance and variance, they're quick to blame things that aren't actually the real culprit for other reasons of like, well, you know, like they're failing to climb or they're just like generally having a, a bad day of game. It's so interesting. It's the kind of thing where people just will the things they don't like into existence and that like, if everyone thinks encounters are the problem, then encounters are the problem, even yeah. if they're not. Can you name a good mechanic since augments? Yeah, hero augments. Hero augments are cool. I had never seen them before in set 10. Dude, I don't even want to hear it. You guys lo love to ask for hero augments. Every single time. Dude, oh my god, lucky pause. Wait, I played a really sick lucky pause game. Now, now, if you're forced to pick hero augments every single time, that's different. But that's not the mechanic's fault. It's the implementation of the mechanic. I'm going to go one step further. I don't even think legends are even that bad of an idea. I think the way they implemented legends is really bad. I, I, oh, man, we're getting real spicy up in here. I don't even think legends are that bad. I'm pretty sure it's the way we, we implemented it. Do a Lotus over Combat Caster. Interesting. Okay. Going for Fortune. 100 win streak? Nah. Let's just throw it all and burn to the ground and start a lose streak into Yone. Yes, the Sorry, boss game. I was play, looking exactly. up Legends. Yeah. Sorry, what are you saying? Oh, no, I was looking up Legends. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Blade didn't play Legends. So, Legends was, before the game, you picked a uh, Legend, right? And it'd be like a character, like um, Aurelian Soul or Ore or something like that. And mm -hmm. you would have a guaranteed augment at every selection screen to be from a Legend. One of your six choices, right? Because you can reroll each of them. Would be guaranteed mm -hmm. to give you a Legend augment. And that was one of the main mechanics of the set. Uh, so if you picked Orn, for example, you'd always get a portable forge auction option at two on every game. So you could always like open up and play around your forge. Um, if you picked Twisted Fate, you would always get Pandora's. If you picked Aurelian Soul, you'd always get Patient Study or like an EXP one, right? And so what ended up happening? How many legends were there? There were like 18 or something like that. There's a lot. Uh, the problem was that they were not very well balanced. So instead of having a stylistic thing where like, hey, I'm a player that loves to play, uh, you know, I love to play Caitlyn or Ezreal. Uh, they instead just became well, what was the most powerful legend and everyone just spammed it. Mm. It was, yeah, you basically would pick like an augment loadout, if you will, in quotation marks. And, and very commonly throughout set nine, it became correct for everyone to pick just their legend augments. Like, you know, you just, you picked all three Ezreal augments. You picked all three Orn augments, things like that. It was, it was not actually incorrect a good amount of time. Which, uh, the thing was, it was approachable for a lot of new and intermediate players. Uh, but, and it was also really good for content, by the way. Uh, one of, one of the saddest things is that, uh, I started being a, a TFT creator in set 10. Like a full-time TFT creator set 10 or sorry, sorry at the end of set nine but twisted fate was uh, a really good legend for memes because you could do like the seven zephyr build which was hilarious you do, you would you would zephyr the entire board uh and then immediately lux delete their back line <laughs> it was Come actually on. a really really funny build that you could do so there's a lot of fun this is really like funny that. to do and yeah. something that a lot of people will be really upset about <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a very oppressive build. It's just funny to pull it off. Mm. Damn. Okay, so we're three exalted, three fortune. Yeah, so full greed. We're just get, we gave yeah. up our streak. We're gonna be playing this into Yone. It looks like because we have gargantuan resolve. Scouting very diligently because he's still decently strong because he has like a, a souped up ribbon too. Yeah. No, I mean he's been winning fights. 
Uh, well, he lost. Oh, yeah, he did win one fight, actually. You're right. I guess he's yeah, just using it for fight. a little bit of econ then. Yeah, I guess if you could just get the marginal improvements, why not? Well, you get Maybe like one gold. gold. <laughs> or two gold. I mean, it's a hedge, right? You win, you win. And it's whatever, but if you lose, you get some more stuff. Yeah. Teemo 2. But he's not going to make the final board, and you're not playing around Teemo right now, so probably skip. Looks like he's contested. You know One person has Heavenly, uh, BT, Titans. Yeah. The person had their stuff on a Yasuo. What do they have it on now? Oh, it's still Yasuo. It's really interesting. Do you, like, like, say that person goes deep into Yone, right? Like, that person hits and someone else is playing Duelist. Like, what do you do from this spot? You just pick one of those things? Uh, you play the line that's much more stable at two stars and not dependent on hitting three stars. And then you usually push levels or so you get or you get really aggressive and you try to hit before them if it really matters. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Yone's case, part of what makes him so insane is that he is stable at two stars. You're probably, you're, you can win fights. You can win a lot of fights at two star Yone. And Ooh, you don't Yone. actually need more than Yone too. You can just push levels, get to nine, and then transition to either Heavenly Kane or... Um, or just like five costs. Is he not going to buy this Yone? He is, but he's just keeping bench space available. Mm -hmm. Or he, I guess he was managing bench space before he sold the Orn. Yeah, he was just thinking about stuff. Makes sense. Yeah, you always want three slots on your bench available because that's the maximum number of champions you can get from an orb. And if you get, if you don't have enough space, it converts to gold. So theoretically, if there's like a oh, unit you know you the really maximum want. amount you could get is three. Three champions from one orb. Oh, from one orb. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, Got it. So you always want to leave three bench space for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Buy fortune if you want it. And at this point, why not? You have 95 gold in stage four. And you get way more on stage four as well. He's about to cash out fortune. I wonder if he pushes his luck. I think so. And then goes nine. I mean, I, th I think at 98 gold, you push your luck. If you if you roll a six, aren't you like in big trouble? Well, if you roll a six, you miss out on like three or four gold and you just ditch fortune. I could buy it. Oh, he's trying to tailor for duelists. He's trying to pivot into duelists. And he does have the Irelia. Teaming up, cash out. Yeah, that's true. He has Irelia. And he has a Tristana too. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, this guy is a Kaisa Whisperer. Like... Every single time he gets an option, he just gets Kaisa. Wow, it is a duelist pivot. The chalice is a bummer, though. He can reforge. Oh, yeah, that's right. If he wants to, he might play it temporarily because it's just it's still better than nothing. And also the Volbear does scale off of AP. Mm hmm. Rello and Aurelio. That's actually really big. Wow. Wow, this ended up working really well. <laughs> mm hmm. Very clean. With this fight as well. Yeah. Once you get the Aurelio, it's kind of like it makes too much sense. Sure, so yeah, that the, the really on seven is really, really big. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting Heavenly Lee Sin? Yes, yes. Next patch, I I think I anticipate Lee Sin to be very good. Oh, that's exciting. You guys heard my thoughts on Passion of Ooh, Ooh, that's not that good. Okay. <clears throat> if you got Locket or Aegis or even, honestly, even like Shrouder's Zephyr would have been so much better. These are one of the worst ones. Was Chalice even better? Uh, then then Zizrot, yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. it's unfortunate that there's only there's only two things that I think are worse. I think Zizrot and Virtu and uh and Neelix the Big Gem. Virtue of the Martyr would have still been better as well. Mhm. Mm I can I, I can check actually on uh, on the data. So here's one tip for data if anybody wants to look it up. You can do something like uh, six duelists. Let me, the six duelist. 
tier three plus would include six eight duelist. Um, let's just say you have Irelia. I don't know, just to have it. And then uh, it, it biases the data, honestly, but it's just it's just to get, help give you a filter a little bit. Then you uh, type in support items, and then you just you you don't have split by item holder enabled. You make sure you have it disabled, and you can just sort by like where generally the better. Uh... Oh, these are on. Oh, you know why? Wait, I have to exclude fine vintage. Oh, actually, it still looks okay. Never mind. Maybe actually Z-Rod Portal is, a, is beastly in this one. But you get what I'm saying, though. Gem is actually really, really bad. Oh, is Z-Rod yeah. actually one of the best ones? It might, it might be. Z-Rod seems reasonable. Oh. Like, uh, my, my first thought noob. was, ooh, because I thought it was good. And you said it was bad, and I was like, huh. Hmm. Maybe I'm just a noob. Maybe. Okay, the Delta on it is so low. Oh, sorry, the sample size on is so low, but its stats are very impressive. Maybe it's actually low key good. Quick question: Does the ZZ does the ZZ raw like does the void spawn actually taunt? Is that a thing it does? No, it used to. It used to. Okay, it's just a thing that exists. There's a yeah. little tanky guy. You know what's also surprising is that Cleaver is even better than Aegis. Aegis is not that good in this uh, setup, which is surprising to me. Hmm. That part is also very interesting as well. Let me try to that narrow it down. Now, now I'm more interested in, in this uh, in this information. Yeah, never mind. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I, I underestimated. It. These rapport is actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, n having not everybody be on your volley bear is pretty nice, I guess. Well, Duelist is also like a ton of melee as well, which is like part of what I thought makes these rock kind of awkward as well. It's just like... Well, the melee just like fall over and die pretty quickly. Well, if uh, it shouldn't because Duelist have like... The, the part of the reason why is I thought that it was just like... It, it, it doesn't scale as well as it should. And also, uh, there's a lot of melee champions already, so you kind of have some positioning nightmares of like how you can get things in and out of places. But, I don't know. Hmm. So it's interesting because it can cover the spot, like it, it can cover, it could patch up the holes in when your duelists are still wimpy. Like obviously later on in the game, your duelists aren't as wimpy and they don't fall over and die as easily, but like. It might be good for what it does to you in the, for you in the mid game, maybe. Nice, Volibear three. Yeah, there's a couple different uh, theories you could come up with. Either way, it's saying it's not that bad, so uh, yeah. it's actually quite solid. It's basically as good as you would expect other support items that aren't locket. Locket's clearly the best, but uh, that's that's really. And look at this silly Yone player. What are you doing? Don't you know you're supposed to just hit Irelia? This Yone player? This Yone player looks fine to me, honestly. Like, yeah, he lost, but uh, they're about to push levels and... Oh, no, I'm just being rude. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, they can also <laughs> they can also just hit Yone 3. They still have 50 gold. How much health do they have? Like 30 something? Okay. Yeah, I mean, they have Heavenly Spat. They seem pretty happy with themselves. Is there a way to check for just one support item? Uh, Probably. I think the way you could do it is, like, only one instance of uh, ZZ Rod and then, like, remove the other support items. I'm not entirely sure how to, like, categorize just, like, only one support. Dude, Volibear 3 is uh, unstoppable at this point, so. Yeah. Gargant Resolve, Jewel Lotus. Is he on. Oh, yeah, he's on 8 right now. So he's just looking for Exalted. Is Exalted better than putting in, like, more Heavenly or more Sage? I live. feel like unit quality kind of matters here, so I'd rather just play, like, Recon or something like that. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can just get to. Poor Dragon Lord, if you get to 10.
Another NAR player, by the way. This is uh, just a level nine board. Five cost, two stars. Every cost of the board. Lissandra two, Udyr two, Zier two, Wukong two. That might beat us just by unit quality. Yeah. And also from the CC. Double death cap Azir. Wow. He's got He's sat strong. down. I have, I have a question. Who's in call with Rodan? Mm -hmm. Does anyone know? Some bitch. This is like a top four. It should be pretty good. It should be pretty good. I, I think the duelist tempo is like too good. Also, there's another Titans that you can get for uh, Gargantuan Resolve. Nice. <laughs> it's with this mag reaction. Oh man, a preview into next patch. This Lee Sin with this setup is going to be great. Even though he lost a little bit of AP from the Titans, I'm pretty sure the, the compensation buff that he gets for like... Or not that compensation buff, but like the general buff he got, it was like so insane. I think someone said that it might be the biggest buff in TFT history, which I'm not entirely sure if I, I agree with that sentiment, but I understand where they're coming from. Oh, this was some nice positioning. Because at the end of the fight, like, Volibear 1v1 versus Nar, Volibear wins. It's hard to say. It kind of depends a lot on, like, uh, like in a vacuum, I think I am inclined to agree. It kind of depends a lot on like augments and their items. Instead of that. But I think I think our Volibear should win. I feel like Volibear with Gargantuan Resolve at the end of a fight just has really, really good 1v1 ability. Just with the stuns too. That is true. Ooh, a Behemoth Silas. Or sorry, not Silas, uh, Galio, excuse me. <clears throat> this guy has been so on it with his positioning. I mean, like, obviously, yeah, he's really good, but I still want to still want to just like make note of it. Bull bear is getting focused down. Ooh, we're not bursting down the Galio and that is not good enough. Wait, is that his ghost? Yeah, that's his ghost. Looks like he won. Oh, okay, someone died in this round. Okay, got it. So we can go to nine and then play I really a two, Wukong two, then just play like Rakan or something. Rakan's good. I, but we get, I get, oh yeah, actually we we're, we're fine with the number of melee units. So we can just play Rakan in second row. How good yeah, are like Exalted Rakan. in the late game level nine comps? Pretty good usually. It just, you have to make sure it fits naturally. Yeah, like you usually don't want to squeeze in more than one really off unit to make it work. Mm hmm. Ooh, there's the Janna. Oh, Janna is Exalted? Ooh. That's pretty nice. Get the Dragon Lord that way. Mm hmm. Yeah, because like Diana's like Diana does some stuff, but she doesn't do a ton for you. So just popping in Janna as just like a little trait stick. This is Janna three, Zyra three on the other side. I'm surprised we found a Janna in the shop. That's like impressive. I was thinking about that earlier. Like Janna would be nice if we could find her. Yeah, the thing about it is that uh like people think 20% is like 0%, but <laughs> you oh, actually hit a bunch of two costs. A lot, three. Right? Well, yeah, sure, but uh, there's still 13 Janas in the pool. That's fair. I'm responding to Comp You Crazy in chat. I mean, five Exalted is getting buffed as well. So it's like, it might actually be a, might actually be a thing you see in your games. I like that you put the Zizra in front of the Lissandra to try to uh, absorb the Lissandra ult. Mm hmm. Oh no! So close. Uh, this is a pretty bad sign. We lost to the ghost very handily. I, this is probably just a second. Not bad. Yeah. Like, luckily we were strong enough. Or we were uh, healthy enough to make it this far. I mean, I really, a two makes a difference. 
if we can hit her. Oh, I really oh. have two. It's pretty good. Pog. Oh, wow. He's really been holding on to this one anvil just in case another component pops in. Oh, this is looking real hard to get through. Ooh, I've all been stunned. Ooh, that yeah, is not good. Ooh. Pretty sure we're dead. Why means board is so capped. Oh. That's a second. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. All right. W was that the last game? Uh, that is that was game five, actually. Uh, Wait, wait, was that the last game? Let me see real quick. I think there might have been one more game. I'm down for one more game. Yeah, I think there's one more game. Nice. Okay, so yeah, that was it, game uh, f five out of six. Sorry, guys. I didn't update the thing, but we have one more. Man, I don't know if you're like this when Taylor leaves the house, but like my girlfriend left and I'm just like, huh, what, what, what do I do? <laughs> like at uh, nighttime, I think specifically, like I'm like done working. I'm chilling. I had dinner. And I'm just kind of sitting there. I'm just like, oh, huh. sure, sure. I know what you mean. It feels like yeah. uh, a, a big hole is left in your life when they're not around. Yeah, I'm just like, huh, normally I'd, you know, hang out or watch, watch anime or something. Read a book? I don't know how to read. That's why I'm a streamer. Hello? You can have an audiobook. I don't have a retort to that, but I don't want to. <laughs> sure, fair enough. <laughs> audiobooks are pretty good. I like that. Or you can listen to podcasts. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I do a lot of reading via audiobooks. I try to do two a month, but that goal has uh, not been met. <laughs> I try to, uh, I try to do, I try to do one a month now. I need to learn how to do things that aren't just like uselessly scrolling through YouTube and just picking a video and it doesn't make me happy. And then it's an hour later and I'm still in bed. I need to figure out how to not do that. I believe in you. Thank you. That's Defiance, full of bear. It's another duelist game. Run it back. Okay. He's looking at Exalted. Darius is an Exalted. <clears throat> I feel like uh, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything like either productive either. Like some people really need to unwind after they stream. Oh yeah, no. This is more of a figure out what to do in the mornings than the nighttime. Nighttime, I'm fine just unwinding and chilling. Oh, do you ever take Kuro grab bag and uh, Volibear 2 right now? Oh, man. That's... It's pretty tempting, actually. I mean, if that augment said, I'm going to hand you a Volibear 2, I feel like you take it. And he gets to make 10. Or make 20, rather, if he wants to sell. Yeah, if you have Volibear 2 in the spot... You still win the fight. Oh, he's not doing it. Okay. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like at odds with each other because like focusing on econ is gonna be kind of weird with using your duplicators. Because okay, well he won, oh. so now he might commit to winning. So it's like a different scenario. Mhm. Mm but uh, theoretically leveling there, if you were to uh, do double duplicate for Vilibet here, you should level and try to win because like that's the whole point. The it, there'd be very it'd be so awkward if you um double duplicated and then lost the fight and then you're in a situation where you kind of want to lose but you have Volibear 2 so you're probably going to win some fights and you're just not leaning into like the momentum that you got from the start of the game that's fair my thought my, my thought was don't level on 2-1 win the fight and level on 2-2 two, two. <laughs> which is which is just not it chief if so he he doesn't have another thing to think about. He doesn't have a good fourth unit to play either. There's no. I mean, actually, he found a. He found a. Uh, never mind. He found a. Uh, oh, and he Kiana, did it. Oh my gosh, he went for it. Yeah. 
But that, and, and the, to go back to the previous round, he didn't have a fourth unit to play either, which is particularly yeah. the reason why you maybe consider that make 20 there. Makes sense. He's going to run back duelist. I guess so. I mean, I feel like he's committed now. He just spent his duplicators to make Volibear too. I'd be very surprised if he played this for tempo into pivot, but uh, that yeah. is available to him. I would not be surprised if he fits in fortune at some point, though. Since it seems like that's just like uh, the thing to do. Yeah, this is really well done. Now, all of a sudden, it looks like he, he can also make 30 if he wins. Like, this is a really interesting, interesting opener. Well, what is Giga caught? My goodness. That's when you get exposed as hard as EU does in the World Championships. You're giga <laughs> Oh, Don't think anyone's contesting now. Yeah, the Gargantuan players are probably going to go to Yone at this point. <clears throat> Why are we flaming EU? Oh, I, we're not. You, everyone knows that I'm actually... Uh, I'm actually a believer in EU. I mean, they gave you guys twice as many spots as as, as last said, so you guys got to do something. <laughs> you know, your words say that you're a believer, but the rest of your words don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is taught? Oh, I kind of love taught. Rod. He might be the only believer. No, EU has some good players. They have some really good players. For sure. Yeah, like there's dozens of them. They also have some like really sick tech. I don't know if you guys heard about this one. All right. Gargantuan Resolve, Titans, Titans, Rage Blade, Malphite. What do you think? Sorry, I was just reading the full Monka Heli watches wide people happy smokes while running over. Hold on, my <laughs> people are saying things. Civilians of... Sh oh, my God. Oh, that's the first time you ever saw that emo? <laughs> yeah, I've never, <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that before. <clears throat> and Fat Dank Peepo is also there, too. Anyway, sorry, what was your question? Oh, what do you think of... Uh, what do you think of... Never mind, don't worry. It's, it's funnier. It, it was funnier, like, two minutes ago, but it's not that funny oh, right okay. now. All good. Basically, there's, like, a really bad build that was circulating... Uh, because someone was saying like, oh, everyone just plays the same two builds, Volibear and, and Yone with Gargantian Resolve. And someone's like, well, there's uh, there's other really good builds too. And then he suggested Malphite reroll, Riven reroll, uh, Silas. <laughs> I mean, Silas is not bad. That was like, that's the one that was like, all right, but uh, yeah. Malphite reroll was the real big one. So what I did was I, I ended up looking up the stats to see... How many people have played Malphite with Gargantuan as a as a carry? And it's been and uh -huh. it averages like a six point five. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I was like, what tech is he peddling, man? Oh yeah, I guess I wasn't looking at the game, but he did just lose that last fight. He did. He lost someone he... leveled to six, it looks like, to beat him. My goodness. Which is uh what are they pretty playing? extreme. I mean you can't do anything about that, and it's really annoying, but it is what it is. On maze on a streak, Darius too. Like our board is good. He was giving that as a legit suggestion. No, he was giving us a legit suggestion. I think. Or it is like next level French humor, which I I could get behind. If the French, it is like no, dude. The French were just playing a, a prank on you. I'd be like, you got me. Well played. <laughs> GG. But, um, yeah, it's one or the other. Some baguette business, if you will. <laughs> okay, we're going for Nico over Malphite. A little bit more HP. Do you ever level and put in Malphite? We don't have a streak to preserve. I don't think it's worth it. And also, I think our, ne our, ne our next unit would be Malphite and Yorick. Thanks. So I think we could just wait for one turn. No level. Okay. Morello. Some Morello is like more common. 
these days. I think people are starting to realize that Triss isn't as important to go for because you could just go Volley 3 and like Lee Sin 2 or Volley 3 and do okay someone else like we saw last game. That was like Tristana 2 with no items. Mm hmm. Triss 3 is nice though. Triss 3 is cool. I think people definitely get got by the fact that like, yeah, Tristana is your last unit. And so obviously you're going to see her do good damage. Okay. Ooh. All right. Well. I mean, Duelist G Crown, is there any reason to not take Duelist Crown? Mm, I guess technically Duelist there. Crown commits. Oh. oh. Huh? This guy's an addict, man. I, I said that he takes hedge fund every game I see him. I didn't expect him to take hedge fund here. This what? dude is a straight addict. Man, I'm getting more dog to get. Oh goodness. my God. Okay, well, at least this, this game just got way more interesting all of a sudden. Did anybody expect him to yeah. pick hedge fund there? Or was it Duelist Crown every single time? He's actually going to try to go fast nine because I guess he recognizes that he's contested and other people are going to try to like, like pivot into him. Yeah, he says, I'm just better than you guys. I want to put this on an UD or two in one stage. I mean, I, I told you guys that China loves taking econ long at three, two. This is like next level, man. He has Volibear two, four duelists. And yeah, other people have Gargantuan Resolve and like other setups that might look like duelists or duelist adjacent, but... He took I mean, heroic just... grab bag into hedge fund. This might be the first time this augment has ever been taken in this combo in this context. <laughs> and one. Ooh, this is an armory. Yeah. That yeah, an armory guest offers uh oh is it armory or Huh? Oh, I thought Diana gave armory. Like a treasure armory. Oh, it's not. Wait, what is this then? Uh I don't know. There is a Diana encounter that gives an armory, there right? There is, there is. Okay, cool. Oh, I think if you sell a unit, you get salvage bin. It, like, oh, de I de see, deconstructs. I see. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, that, that's actually another actually cool thing about encounters that I like is that you could like play 200 games and still never see a specific encounter. Mm -hmm. I think I just played my first game ever of Mount, of Yorick where you leveled you can play seven units at the beginning of the game. I played that like yesterday or something like that. Huh. I've gotten that a few times. You go fourth max here if you click Duelist Crown. Hmm. Interesting. What are your thoughts, Dan? Oh, I mean Sasa's a better player than I am, so I, I would uh if he if that's what he thinks. Also, aren't aren't uh, isn't is isn't are you guys like do like duelist reroll experts? Let me see. Six duelists. Is duelist crown just not a high duelist enough power crown. augment? Uh, I mean, it raises the the win rate of the comp, so it doesn't imply that it makes you win uh, a lower amount. But I mean, he has he has heroic grab bag, which is what I don't like about the setup. He's gonna play fortune. <laughs> oh my god. I called that. Oh, he's going for it because of the, Yeah, yeah. The, I, I can agree with that. Hero grab bag just plays for lower cap because your gold augment is just purely for tempo and then you just fall off when people get online. Yeah, I mean, we're. I think our brains were too sunk cost pilled. Like, yeah, he's got Volley 2, but he's had Volley 2. He, he basically picked, you know, lesser build a bud. But are you gonna really like cap out your board around your bud? Like, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. I'm kind of watching to see if the, if uh, this bull bear ends up cleaning up. That's pretty nice. Okay. Uh, so he's for he he thought about fortune, didn't actually go for it. A hundred and twelve or twenty gold. And he's still level six. Okay, no, no, no. So then no. Uh, at nine, what are we trying to play around? This is going to be Udyr items, I guess? Yeah. Udyr or set? Oh, you like playing around set, huh? I think if you find a set too, you put these items on set too. Man, Why I don't really like that, set like... unless you get it in faded right now. He just feels like, um, he feels like he doesn't scale fast enough. Yeah, it's reasonable. But this guy's also, like, if this guy hits a set on 4 1 or something, or 4 2, then you might start sure, playing it. Sure, sure. 
But he's not gonna get. He's not gonna uh, roll. No, he's not. So it's he's like gonna get the natural fairly soon. Mm hmm. I mean, okay. I I think that everyone is slowly realizing, and I think the better players have already realized that like every spot is a fortune spot, truly. Uh, for the you have to at least be open to it. I think. Yeah. Ooh. More fortune units. It's not a two. So he is playing fortune for stage four. <laughs> it's three, right? So he's going to lose three and go at four, five to level nine. That's a, this guy's a sicko. This guy's this a awesome. sicko. Actually addicted. Don't you play for No, he want he he wanted to go for the next level. He wanted to play Fortune Stage Four because he had three. So he's gonna go for the the twenty, the twenty by four five. Diseased, oh, fifty nine HP. Oh shit! Gargantuan Resolve, Garen. <laughs> uh, that's, that's pretty good story, champion. He just has hit nothing else. Uh, can sticks and stones be removed already? No, it's it is going patch. to, right? I don't like okay. any of these. Keepers is okay, I guess. Is he take sticks and stones? Oh, rolling for days. This guy's a D. He's going to take the e triple econ. Watch, 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 watch. Ready? Triple econ in three, two, one. Do it, do it. You know you want to. Yes, I knew it. Oh my God. Actually, an addict. This is. Is it? You guys are watching degenerate augment. behavior be re, uh, uh, just right before your eyes. This guy just is addicted to rolling. Just loves having gold. My goodness. I have this guy hard red. Like I just know him. I've watched too many of his <laughs> vods and sets head to know exactly this is what he wants to do. He wants to be rich. <laughs> econ, econ, and here's a here's a sick thing. He he might actually do well this game. Like this is I'm probably really not a bot four. This is probably not a bot four. Okay. I saw this dude do this so many times. Go fast nine and then hit like uh like headliner uh Keanu or something like that on like four five last get last night. It was it was so gross. Oh, it's only twelve. Oh, I thought he had one more. Oh, he played it one round before this. He no pushes way. his luck. Oh no, God. no way. Oh what the hell? <laughs> okay, 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 well, okay, just... okay, okay, right. okay, okay. Okay, hey, man. You, okay. If you know you're okay. gonna roll too. You okay. press it every time. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Um, hmm. <laughs> this dude is who Soju thinks he is. Like, man, the the, the amount of the amount of uh. Oh hi, thank you. Hi, buddy. Hi. If he pulls this off, it's kind of it's kind of insane, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. He's got 30 health. Dude, and this guy is gun. actual Chad. He's an actual Chad. Now he went from uh, an addict, like a sick addict that needs help, to he's actually just a true Chad. Yeah. It, he's like he's like the guy in the meme who's like digging for diamonds. Who's like the guy who actually hits. Who's like above yeah. the guy who quits right before he hits it, you know? You know the you guys know the you you, you guys know the Twitter bros? Who are like on um who are like a uh, big time stock guy and they love to post wolf of wall street memes like all the time they like to post that one clip of leo who always goes like i'm not leaving yeah <laughs> that's, this. That's, that's that's what i'm imagining <laughs> right now with ice at this very moment he just he thinks he's the wolf of wall street he is the wolf of wall street if he wins this game this guy thinks he's the wolf man he ain't By fortune. He's got to get that health back. 144 gold. <laughs> I mean, if this, is, <laughs> if this doesn't tell you how much these guys value fortune, then I don't know what will. Wow, he killed an extra unit. Four unit loss? That's not even that bad. 21 really HP? Isn't. He's at two lives. He has 35. This is the cash out now, right? Why doesn't he start pre-leveling? What is this? He just doesn't care, right? 
Like it, it's an no, extra he, point three seconds. Uh, uh, he to he needs mash. the button presses, the dopamine. Yeah. He got a Q cone and a needlessly big gen. Oh no, is that the that might that might be the encounter? Temporary items. Oh, then what he get? Oh, he's playing around Kha'Zix. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Wait, this guy's a genius. He played around you can Kha'Zix. Can on 4-6? Yeah, you can get Kha'Zix like any time. That's kind of what makes oh, it, these encounters okay, crazy. Okay. He played around it. Dude, look at this roll down. Look at the moves. Oh no, he TP'd. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's not good. I really am Rolo. Titans BT. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Redemption? I'm thinking redemption. It's okay, that's why you have two lives. That's why we have two lives. Mm -hmm. That's why we have two lives. Oh god, we're dead, aren't we? Nah, that was fine. That's, a, that's actually this a really good econ loss. Perfect econ time. loss. Not yeah. really, we lost by five units. <laughs> it's, uh, it's looking bad for your boy. Wait, so what did he get from his fortune cash out? Components. Oh, okay. Oh boy. Hey, what's this? Uh, what's this Irelia doing on the side? Like on the bench? She's kind of scaring me. Irelia? Oh, it's just he's just benching it right now. I don't know if he's gonna sell it. <clears throat> oh, he's going for eighty-three. Hold on a second. Holy. Is this Wait a real? Second. Is this real life? This dude thinks he has everything must go. <laughs> he sold the arrow. Wait, he's he's too off. Oh my god. What Ooh. is happening? Exalted now? Holy oh, he was Death playing Defiance? for Exalted. Wait, where is the Death Defiance? Who has it? Has anyone seen my death's defiance? Is he, is he dead? Is he dead? No, he's living. That's a new oh year too. God. What the heck, man? This guy's going so fast. That was such a sick transition and roll down. I would have died. What the I would have died 10 times over. We all would have died. Oh, that's where the death's defiance is. But now oh, there's a belt on this over here. What? It's okay. Put on Annie. Put on Annie. Mm, that's bait. That's bait. That's a way. That's a way. Oh, no. Way, way's exalted. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> oh, wait, he got extra HP. Where did that 20? Oh, oh the encounter was the Ari kiss. Oh, oh my God. Holy. Wait, some guy FF. Is that even allowed? No, that per well, I thought that person was already dead. Okay, we messed up on the, the Death Defiance. That's actually a really big error, but... <clears throat> Man, he's making this Kaisa board look bad. <laughs> I'm got another item! Is Rainbow Vest! Oh my god. Huh. It's Wait, a win out. Where did you get this item from? It's an actual win out. Who's laughing now, huh? See. Huh? Everyone thought he was going to um... go eighth. <laughs> yeah, Alessandro, no, I saw. This one is more insane. Annie, one more Annie, and three more rounds, and he has Annie three. He's gonna get the Annie on the carousel. He could, yeah. I believe. He could. I believe. Another Kaiser player. Also, he's positioning the Orin next to the Alessandro so he can get another third item on Alessandro. It's pretty smart. Mm hmm. Potted? Dude, he's, he's gonna enough. win the game, isn't he? Wait a second! Wait a second! Oh! My goodness. I mean, he, he doesn't even... You got another Annie. Huh? What? Wait, what? Wait, where'd the other Annie come from? Why does he have eight Annies? Wait, huh? Who? Cool. But he actually just he, wins the game, then. Now, now there's it? two more turns and he wins the game. He was in the shop? Oh. Okay. You went to Target? And bought an Annie? Well, I, you guys you should, you should have said something. <laughs> we just didn't notice. <clears throat> That's on us. Wait, so there's two more rounds. He rolled and found it. So if he, if he, if he, uh, he's going to roll now, but if he, um, if he wins one more fight, then he wins the game because he can't die. Yeah. 
right. and any three is basically like a 4.5 three star like she's not she's a clear cut above a lot of the other four costs in terms of three star power yeah she's really good wow wow you remember that one time we put three econ augments Oh yeah, 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 that was uh, that was pretty wild. Too bad he died Remember though, that? right afterwards. <laughs> <clears throat> he never hit. Wait, what's happening here? What's happening here? I mean, We're fine, right? Uh, yeah. uh, oh, we might uh, we might lose this fight. Huh? Oh, ho, 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 and it's over. It's over just like that. He actually need, <laughs> it, it, they needed to kill. They needed to kill him. He, they ran out of time. He gets oh, he gets a guaranteed god. now. Oh my god. Even He's Shroud, why not? It's actually okay. And it is, it's Jover. It's been a while since I pulled that one out. Is even Trout okay? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's not amazing, but you might as well complete an item. I don't think you want to greet it to try to see if you can get another completed item. Uh, I, I would have waited to like see who my opponent was, but yeah, I'm, I think it's extremely reasonable. <clears throat> oh man, this Yone. Nah, we have Lissandra and we oh wait, our Zier died. Uh oh. I mean that's fine. We have Annie three. They can't kill us. Nope. He's dead. He's so dead. Freddy, Lissandra, little teapot, short and stout, and bloop. You can go to ten. He has Annie three now. My god. <laughs> Watching everybody go to his board. Okay, I'll, I'll just say it. This guy reminds me of CN Setsuko. Just like his, his decisiveness, the the audacity, right? Just the, the fact that this guy had the balls to even do this is like kind of wild. Although yeah, I think Setsuko insane. might not even be as <laughs> as wild as three econ augments, but yeah. You don't need combat augments when you have any three. He just saw the vision. He's thinking, uh, all these items are kind of bad, actually. He doesn't need Morello. doesn't need Sunfire. Yeah, just like sadly blue buff. At least blue <clears> buff <throat> makes us even okay. cast. P Raptor says is undeserved. This is literally what he did set 10 to make worlds. So he's doing it again in another <laughs> tournament. So like you're saying it's undeserved, but this is just like what he does every game. What do you mean by undeserved? Have you seen the precision of the roll down? That was bonkers. To fit in Exalted, no team planner, no nothing, just sliding, <laughs> just bobbing and weaving. He also didn't even need two lives, by the way. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, Ari just bailed him out. He's at 23. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this was an extremely impressive game. Okay. Aliens have invaded planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that they will uh, allow our human, our pathetic species to survive is if um, their best alien goes up against our best person at rolling 200 gold at level 9 and building a board. Heads up. Are we trusting <laughs> Setsuko with humanity or are we trusting Ice with humanity? I might be trusting Ice, you guys. Actually, I don't Feels know. It's pretty like close. It's pretty angle. close. It's pretty close. <laughs> I take you hell no no way you, I'm not trusting Keenan with anything man he, he's gonna die with two dupes on his bench humanity is doomed <laughs> I take soju humanity has lived long enough that's true maybe the earth can finally restore for a little bit oh my god <laughs> Always knew that's how it would end. Dude, he actually, this is an actual win out. This is ridiculous. And the 83 <clears throat> was just. And he had to have been scouting throughout the time of just like, yeah, no one has Annie's. I'm going to do this. Totally. The mental acuity, the physical dexterity, the raw IQ. My God. This game is great. As an expression of skill. A cool game. 
I like it. Nico. <clears throat> Just having a unit to play at nine. Okay, how has he avoided the number one streaker the entire time? The Zoe three player. Oh. Also, his positioning is really interesting, by the way. Okay, never mind. What, the positioning it's right here? It's... Now. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just to get everybody to wrap around the Annie. Well, he's trying to Lissandra the Lissandra before Lissandra could get his Annie. And that was successful. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> he sniped it. We... I didn't even see that. I'm yeah, taking I Malala. Remember. I need a world champion, not a flop. Wow. Oh, my God. I bet you wouldn't say that to him at LAN. <laughs> Man. Actually, you know what? I found out he's going for Huey 3. I found out Setsuka viewers would say it to him at LAN. Because while this dude was competing, there were actual Setsuka viewers who were just backseating him while he was playing at LAN. No way. <laughs> They're not 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 intentionally like trying to backseat him, but like they were commenting on his plays loudly enough for Setsuka to hear him and they, they were like right behind him. That's so funny. So I, if there's one thing I learned about Setsuko viewers is they, they would say it to him at LAN. Because they did. <laughs> <laughs> and he was he was getting so tilted. He was getting so tilted. Like, I think... Uh, I don't think he would ever, like, blame them for why he got eliminated. But <clears throat> to say that it wasn't a factor is probably not true. Yeah, like, he can blame them in his head. Oh, my God. Oh my. We are officially at Hui 3 watch. And what is opponent Hui doing? 3. What's the opponent, the opponent doing? Trying to get Morgana three. I mean, that doesn't even. That doesn't even do anything. Yeah, and Morgana three, no items, probably not. Yeah. I think Morgana three with items doesn't really do much. Okay, Azir three, Way three. Oh my god. Actually, or what, Hui he's, three? he's gonna end it with Way three. He's holding Morganas. Oh, wait, that is so nasty. You know what he just did? He actually he uh, waited for him. He, he had the Morgana, waited for a second or two because he knew that that person was rolling, so they would roll more yeah. gold and not hit the Morgana. My God. <clears throat> it's a very, very subtle thing he just did. Yeah, just a little pause. Yeah, he like because he wanted him to waste his gold rolling for the Morganas, and he just held his shot, and then he continued rolling. Mm-hmm. Nasty. Next level rat tactics. Opponent has no ankles, it looks like. Like just looking at the board, looking at the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, it's not like he's basically. <laughs> oh, he's going for it? Huh? No, oh, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. The, the, wait a second. The disrespect. Wait a second. He's actually trying to go for it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Lissandra, said, Lissandra, we... blue buff, edge. I mean, he he's also styling on this guy now. He yeah, just sold his two star styling. five costs. He just sold his two star five costs to just win anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> no way, man. I mean, if you were this good, you just style, right? This guy like is a demon. Could. This guy is a demon. Oh my god. <clears throat> wow. I mean, that's one way to wrap up the groups, and that's why he won the groups, I guess. Yeah, what the? This, this was the last game. What a finale. What a show he put on. All right. This is ice? Oh, yeah. This is ice, all right. This guy, this guy is a beast. My goodness. Well, wow, that was awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to have watched these games with you, especially this last one. Yeah, thanks for joining. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun chilling. I'm going to go... Oh, God. Get ready for bed? Well, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably better for you to get ready for bed, but I'm not going to be online much longer either, so... No, no, I'm going to hop off. I'm going to hop off. All right. Um, well, thank you for having me. See you later, chat. Okay. Um, and have some fun games if you're going to go play more games. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye, buddy. See ya. <clears throat> Bye. All right. Wow, that was a very interesting VOD review session. This guy is...
I, 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 I feel like I can't replicate that. I feel like the problem with it, with me playing those kinds of styles that you guys see me play, I move too slow. It's moments like that where I'm just like, man, I'll just gonna stick to coach streaming. <clears throat> if this guy wants to banter with me on stream, I could probably hang, but not really in a, in a TFT lobby. He's a gambling addict. Yeah. He's a gambling addict. Holy shit. I'm actually still kind of like reeling off of that game. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that one was like, whew. I need a cigarette, you know? Yeah, I need, I need to calm down a little bit. <laughs> Come down from the, from the, from the climax. Sheesh. All right. All right. So uh, what do we do now? I suppose. What do we do now? I, I, so tomorrow, tomorrow, Mortdog said that he's going to do a dev hour thing. Now queue up. Dude, I can't, I can't go to bat after Babe Ruth. Mortdog said tomorrow that he's going to be dropping something called dev hour two. Okay. So check. Che Mirix, who, by the way, if you guys don't know who this guy is, this guy is the is the dude who brought us set four and set six. And also worked on set nine, a.k.a. like a lot of people would be thinking like it's, this guy has made some uh, most people's favorite set. Uh, so he's he's goaded for that. And Whitrock, who has been one of the OG devs for Riot for TFT for like a long time. He's a set designer <clears throat> uh, and Whitrock has also done a lot of really good stuff that people love. They've recorded Dev Hour 2, and it's going to be four hours long, and it's going to probably post it Tuesday. And I figured tomorrow we can watch Dev Hour, kind of talk a little about TFT philosophically, and then jump into OCE and play some ladder games. So today's stream is like, watch CN, kiss this patch goodbye, but not on the cheek. Definitely like kind of a... How do the Italians do it when they like know they're about to like 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 they're in the mafia and they know they're about to like uh like this is the enemy, like a friend of me kind of kiss like that. For anyone happened to Bebe, I haven't seen your stream in a while or active social media for like four months. What happened to Bebe? Let me see. Bebe Auto Chess. I like this tweet. Dear Riot Games, this is my feedback as a longtime customer of your games for 12 years. You are being scammed, D colon. Oh man. Oh man. Anyways, at the bottom, I have a busy schedule now, so I can't really keep researching and giving you guys feedback for free. Sorry, sweating emoji with a smile. Oh, smiling face with an open mouth and cold sweat. Hope you guys do well. Colon close parentheses. So uh he's busy, he has a busy schedule now. That's why. He can't really keep researching and giving us feedback for free. But uh he's sorry about it. <clears throat> he's sorry about it. <laughs> dude Dobbs wait this okay Dobbs is uh one of our Brazilian brethren by the way he uh he won the most recent pro finals for Brazil he's one of the top players that's gonna be playing in the cup I've never seen you play world but a lot of players manage to play worlds more than once and then you keep talking about RNG dude he is seething he's doing a period he's doing a paragraph break like lines li line sentence he's just like he's pending enter twice and then you keep talking about RNG, period. Milana just won TFT Vegas Open and KDA Cup and the World Championship. So blaming RNG set 10 shows that you don't even know the game you say you care, period. Enter, enter. I feel you're just frustrated and keep doing posts like this so you just get some attention, period. Enter, enter. Just move on, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Gave him the, the Brazilian Baja Blast. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. My God. If the set's starting going down in quality, it's cause BB stopped giving his feedback. <laughs> Said it better than I could have myself, Blister. Listen, I used to be a Bebe apologist, and he's still my friend, but he has given some terrible takes on Twitter. I will uh, admit that. But uh, alas, I'm gonna, I miss it. You know, I miss it. I ha haven't having baby tweets on my feed was just easy content these days what is there to read on on competitive tft what is there to react what is there to react the daily discussion thread all right oh how about this <clears throat> why are three cost carries more complex than they used to be in recent sets compared to four cost this is what we're talking about these days 
So is it just me or three cost complexity has, com has escalated the set while four cost keeps the same complex level from the past set? Also, is it possible that some of these three cost units balance without being trash or OP? Because I just find it kind of difficult to think how you only can be balanced without being OP and all the things you can do, even a loon. Man, bring back baby tweets. <laughs> bring back the baby tweets. Honestly, I think that this is a, an, an interesting an interesting question. I'm just I'm just saying that baby. <laughs> He was like, he was a unifying, he was a unifying lightning rod. But yeah. All right. That's it for me today, guys. Short stream, really fun stuff to watch ice pop off. Tomorrow, we're going to do dev hour, play Man, some OC I'm getting games. More dogged again. And then the new patch will be here. BB did it better agreed. <laughs> thank you, Tangent. All right. Thank you, everyone who gifted subs. Thank you, everyone who showed up. Thank you to Bloody who hung out in chat. You guys can check, check out our stream, twitch.tv slash Bloody. She streams when I don't, so it's a really easy time. Yeah, I won't be mad if you watch her. Just don't tell me. No, actually, you should tell me, because she's great. Have a good night, everyone. Peace.